check your fucking sis privilege. Welcome everyone to the first episode of Tumblerisms. Uh, today we're going to be looking at headmates. Now, uh, before we begin, because there might be a few Tumblerettes who are watching this video, I wanted to try to accommodate your sensitivities by including uh, a trigger warning for you. Um, sadly, I'm not able to do so. Uh, many of you who know me personally understand the, uh, the tragedy in my life. Uh, my father was murdered with a handgun, and because of that, triggers trigger me, and I can't put a trigger warning in this. It's kind of a, a catch-22, if you will, which is ironic, because he was murdered with a Colt-22. Oh, I feel so unburdened now that I've said that, and that the tragedy can be put to rest. Uh, hopefully you'll be understanding and uh, grant me a little leeway. Uh, I'm not going to be able to explicitly warn you about all the scary things that might be coming up in the video, but I'm sure you're adult enough to, to handle it. You just have to have to grit and bear it, uh, which I know is ableist of me to say. Some people can't grit. They have no teeth or tongues or fucking heads. But uh, I think you get what I'm saying. So what exactly is a headmate? Uh, I'm sure most of you are probably curious what it is. You probably haven't heard of the term before. And that's uh, completely reasonable. I mean, most people don't encounter crazy on a daily basis, so you're not going to be familiar with what a headmate is. Luckily for us, livingplural.tumblr.com has an FAQ section where they cover all of this. Uh, let's, let's take a look. Let's see what, uh, what we're getting into here. Now, there are a lot of other terms associated with headmates. Uh, multiple systems, multiplicity, plurality. But uh, we're going to try to get to the core of it, and I think this first question really, really gets to the gist of what it is. Uh, question, what is a multiple system? Answer. It's a group of people sharing the same body while still being individuals with their own personalities and interests. That's interesting. That might sound like something you've heard before. There's, there, there's another term for it. Uh, I believe it's called schizophrenia. Uh, or you might even throw in a little bit of uh, multiple personality disorder or disassociative identity disorder. But uh, that's, that's not what we're talking about. This is different. A living plural is going to educate us. Again, this FAQ is so helpful. Uh, let's look at this question. Are you schizophrenic bipolar? Answer, some people are, but that doesn't necessarily have to do with being multiple. Oh, all right. So this is something outside of schizophrenia. Interesting. Uh, what about this? Do you have multiple personality disorder, uh, disassociative identity disorder? Answer, there are people who have natural multiplicity, and then there are those who have MPD, DID, which is sometimes also called trauma-based multiplicity. Hmm. So going off of what Living Plural is telling us is that schizophrenia, uh, multiple personality disorder or disassociative identity disorder is a medical condition completely separate, completely separate from multiple systems or headmates. And again, a headmate is simply a person occupying your body with you. Now that could be anything, and I do mean anything. That could be a 400 year old other kin from the swamps of Louisiana, it could be a 22 year old transsexual acrobat named Stefan from France or it could be a binary star located 300 light years from Earth. You could be a host to anything. Anything could be your headmate. Now, this living plural tumbler is pretty great. I mean, it's got, a, it's got a lot of information for you to sink your teeth into, aside from the FAQ. Like uh, this section, respect please. Oh, well, look at this, multiple etiquette. Here are the do's and don'ts when dealing with a multiple system. All right, let's, let's take a look at a few of their do's and don'ts to try to get an idea of what, uh, what a, a plural system, a multiple system, or a, a headmate is like. Uh, how do I not offend them? Because God knows, I don't want to offend them. I want to be as sensitive to everyone as I can be. Please don't call us alters or personalities. Huh, okay. Trauma is not always the reason we are plural. There's a chance it might be. So please be respectful about the subject until you know, and even after. We can be triggered like anyone else. Oh, hmm. Plurality and multiplicity is not always a disorder. Not all headmates are dangerous. Not all systems are unstable. We've been dealing with this for longer than you've known us. Respect that. We might have identities you are completely unfamiliar with, be it in regards to gender, race, species, or something else entirely. Please respect that we know what we are, whether you've heard of it before or not. All of us are people. Now wait a minute, <laughs> I don't want to offend anybody here, but didn't you just say, three spaces above you, that uh, your identities could be anything in regards to gender, race, species, or something else entirely? So technically, not all of you are people. I don't, I don't know, I'm getting confused. Hopefully your amazing Tumblr will help me through this, so I don't offend any of you. Now, just based on this, you might be thinking, huh, this sounds completely fucking crazy. Uh, you would be right. But to really drive that point home, let's get to know the team. There's a team that runs this Tumblr, and 
I think we should meet them. Uh, a few of the individual, <laughs> excuse me, I am being so insensitive. A few of the systems that run this, uh, this Tumblr. Uh, we've got plurs, plurez, plurs, something like that, P-L-U-R-E-S. Throw it out there, figure it out yourself. We're a medium-sized natural origin system. Our most active front runners are Carrie, Hess, M, and Noel. We tend to discuss plurality with an emphasis on philosophical definitions of personhood and the complexities of plurality with materialistic, skeptical worldviews. We run a website about plurality, ex uno plurs. We've been in the plural community for over four years, and we were formerly known as the Fen Group before changing our system name to plurs in 2011. How about the House of Asgard? A rather large group containing fictives, non-humans, a subsystem, and even a factive member. We are naturally conceived with a history of trauma. We are not diagnosed with dead, however we have symptoms. We like to consider a lot of our identity to be in the gray area. Main fronter is Lucas, non-human canine, male pronouns. You can find a list of all of our members on our About Us page. All aboard the crazy train, the next stop, Batshit Central Station. Now, Living Plural isn't the only Tumblr you'll find this on. In fact, headmates are all over Tumblr. It's got its own little subculture, its own little uh, community built up around it. People support it, and they put it forward as a, a great and unique lifestyle. And I mean, this is real, right? Uh, this is totally legitimate. These aren't people who are just creating something fantastical to uh, try to make their lives a little more interesting because they're either socially isolated or bored or don't have a lot of friends, and so they seek to try to make themselves different or unique by creating something that's uh, truly extraordinary and then acting as if it were real. No, that, that couldn't possibly be it. No, this is totally legitimate. Uh, let's look at a few of the conversations you'll find around Tumblr regarding this. Uh, here we go, we have one. Somebody asking, why don't you just write a novel instead of pretending there are people in your head? Seems like a reasonable question. Uh, the response, wow, this is really rude. I'm not pretending anything, you ableist asshole. My headmates are very real, and for you to act like they're not is just as bad as me saying you're made up or whatever. I get maybe you've probably never been the victim of oppression or bullying, so you don't understand how difficult it is to be part of a multiple system, but you have no idea the prejudice we experience on a day-to-day -day basis. Get a fucking clue, Sophia. Oh, my heart weeps, Sophia. Uh, to be, to have this condition, to, uh, to, to deal with a multiple system, my god. The oppression you must face on a daily basis. How horrible. Uh, let's, let's see, what, what are some other, uh, postings related to headmates we might see. Uh, we've had the 11th Doctor and a weeping angel in our headspace for ages, and they've managed to stay away from each other. But now we've got Loki too, and he keeps trying to get control of the angel, and the angel keeps trying to take control of him. It's really wrecking up the space. What should we do? Uh, the answer posted is, well, you could try to somehow separate the angel and Loki by force, locking them somewhere so they don't get near each other. Or you could try kicking one of them out, which isn't the best option, but if that's all you can do, it's a last resort. Followers, any advice? LC Angel. I didn't know these were physical things, uh, tangible items that you could, you know, interact with on a real basis. I mean, maybe they're dancing around the hypothalamus, who knows? Somewhere under the skull, hanging out by the ear canal, you know, having a frappuccino, getting ready to type on Tumblr. Uh, let's look at another one. Since we share a body, is it possible for my headmates to feel my phantom shifts? I'm a non-human, as well as a multiple, and they've been telling me they've been feeling my shifts when they've been fronting. I don't know exactly what I'm asking, but I feel like it's something that's not supposed to happen. The answer? It's not uncommon. If I'm close enough to the front when someone else's fronts, they often feet my tail. Lucas, House of Asgard. How utterly unique and special, Lucas. Oh, here's a really good one. I have Jesus as one of my headmates. This is really hard to explain to my religious friends, you don't fucking say, who claim it can't really be Jesus, and they know Jesus better than I do. Any advice? Uh, the answer they received? I don't know how religious you are, Anon, but here's my opinion. As both a Christian, I'm a Methodist, and a headmate, explain that this is God working in your life in the way that he thinks is best for you, that God speaks to you, and this is how he does it. He's God. He can speak to you how he chooses, and ask them how they could know Jesus better than you, Will Magneton. Yeah, that's great advice. I can't possibly see that backfiring. Oh, you hear the voice of God? Totally legitimate. I say, run with it. Whatever he tells you to do, go and do it. I can't foresee anything bad happening from that advice. 
great advice will. Now I feel I'd be remiss if I didn't just show you what the reality of what these people are pretending at is really like. Oh, let's get down to brass tacks. Headmates and multiple systems and plurality is bullshit. It's complete bullshit. Now schizophrenia and multiple personality disorder and disassociative identity disorder, those are legitimate. So when we have a community like this, it's really disgusting in two different ways. In the first, it's mocking a real thing. And it's doing it in a callous and apathetic way. These people are using it to get attention. They're taking something that's horrible and tragic and people suffer with on a daily basis and they're treating it like it's a game. And that's just repulsive. There's really no other way to look at it. Uh, can you think of something more disgusting than that? Uh, I mean, I, I, it's hard to fathom. I, I, I suppose I could create a fake charity for uh, children with uh, muscular dystrophy and just take the money and go spend it on hookers and coke. I mean, that's essentially what they're doing. Uh, they're, they're trying to change the conversation. They create this, this fictionalized idea of what uh, you know, is really happening to certain people. And then um, they, they create an entirely new vocabulary and idea around it. So somebody who's really got schizophrenia or some other mental disorder and is fucking suffering is now looked at like, oh, it's not that big a deal. I know this guy on Tumblr who tells me it's a fucking blast. All those voices you hear in your head? That must be awesome. Are they fronting yet? How many headmates do you have? Could you imagine how fucking destructive that would be? If you had schizophrenia and some asshole on Tumblr who thinks they have headmates is having a conversation with you and tries to tell you it's a good thing, that it's not bad, that it's not horrible, that schizophrenia is yay awesome, and that you're just not coping with it right, maybe you should blog about it? Now that, that, that again, that's one reason it's fucking repulsive. The other reason, and this kind of ties back into that, that religious post, is there are really people who have horrible fucking conditions. And so when they somehow get onto fucking Tumblr, and they're talking to these retards who believe in headmates, and they tell somebody who really has schizophrenia and is fucking having auditory hallucinations that they are legitimately hearing the voice of God, and they should do what that voice tells them, can you fucking imagine the havoc that person is going to wreak? Oh, I don't need to take my meds today. Some guy told me it's totally Jesus. Yeah, your friends are telling you it's not Jesus because you're fucking crazy. Now, th these people like to play pretend. What is it really like? I mean, what, what are these diseases that they like to play pretend about actually like? Well, take a look. I know how to angle myself with the rest of the men, do you see? That's why I did that to Sue. That's why I did that to Aunt Ethel, you know. And uh, I want Fritz and Arm to know, the praying mantis and the spider and the grasshopper, to know that uh, I think it's very important that we act badly, but I think it's very important that we act uh, uh, in reality of what makes the world go right, you know. You're liable to go sliding off the curb into your death uh, on a man that can't control himself. So really, the end this wins, uh, whether it's no or yes. So um, I think bulk sometimes wins. In some of the cases, you know, the very agile cases, the bulk wins. But I think the most important thing uh, the, uh, the devil can do is to court is to uh, self-sacrifice and coordinate the Kmart walk so pleasure can be evened out. Now that gentleman's name is Bob. That was from an HBO documentary about schizophrenia. You can see how disjointed his conversation is. He has to live with his parents. His life is so fucked up over his condition, even with treatment, that he can't really function on a day-to-day -day life. This was an academic, somebody who was in debate, who had a high intellect, who was into you know different kinds of sports, and it was just it was completely cut off at the knees for him. He's not, this isn't some great thing, this isn't some grandiose thing for him. He doesn't blog about how fucking fun it is. He doesn't talk about the voices he hears as headmates. It has ruined his life. Uh, let's take a look at another example. I get to the point where I don't want to live anymore because the mental process of the mind takes over. When I think I'm doing good for a while, something mental takes over and it scares me. When's the last time you felt good? I, I don't remember. It's killing me. It's keeping me from having a boyfriend, keeping me from driving, it's killing me. I just believe that somebody who's been suffering years ago, they should take an OD and die because psychologically they may not want to take the OD, but to get out of their misery, they might. Mm -hmm. They fight it every night and every day he's always fighting with me. Michael's always fighting with me. Drop dead, geek, um, 
retarded bitch. Oh. Now, what she's saying is pretty accurate. A lot of people who have these these conditions, the real conditions, kill themselves. It's not a fucking game. Uh, the suicide rate is anywhere from 30 to 50 percent from fu somebody with like a, something like full-blown schizophrenia, and they vary obviously country to country and year to year. But it's it's a serious thing. I mean, she you know is talking about suicidal ideation uh, and about the voices she hears. Now, when these people talking about headmates are writing and blogging about how fantastic this is, and they're talking about oh you know so and so is fronting and we're having conversations and they're fighting with each other, they make it sound like it's fun or like it's two people in a room having a conversation. The voices she hears aren't like that. All right, she's being called a bitch and a cunt and a geek and a retard. Can you just imagine that? Imagine somebody being in the same room as you and screaming at you and calling you horrible names and they won't fucking stop. Are you going to go on Tumblr and blog about how fucking fun that is? So you can see how repulsive this is. It's just disgusting. These people are horrible people. To make something like this up, to become unique and special and to get attention, to take away uh, what a real condition is and to try to twist it to your advantage, and to degrade the people who actually suffer from something that you're mocking and pretending to have? Uh, what, what kind of moral character do you have? How do you live your life? So if I had to choose what category Headmates falls into, I'm probably going to put it in three. It seems like something that's developed by people who are especially lonely or socially isolated and are desperate to try to become uh, something unique. You know, your typical special snowflake. Because after all, Tumblr is a blizzard. It is full of snowflakes, and you need to be a special one. And the only way to do that is to create the craziest shit you can, and to try to convince other people that it is totally lit. to the second episode of Tumblrisms. Today we've got uh, quite the uh, treat for you. Uh, we're going to be taking a look at the phenomenon known as thin privilege on Tumblr. Now you may have heard uh, other terms used in relation to this, uh, maybe even interchangeably. Uh, things like body positivity or fat acceptance. Uh, the thing to keep in mind though is we're specifically going to be looking at thin privilege. Now there are vague definitions that separate all of these, and I wouldn't expect anybody to really know it. But uh, what exactly are we looking at? What is thin privilege? Uh, luckily for us, there's a very well-known Tumblr that deals with this. Uh, that's one of the main reasons why we're sticking to thin privilege. Uh, f you know, chances are, if you've been on 4chan or Reddit or a host of other forums, you've seen different uh, postings or screen caps or quotes from this specific Tumblr. It is the mecca when it comes to fat and crazy on Tumblr. Well, hell, it is the mecca when it comes to obese insanity on the internet, period. However, before we get into that, before we jump headfirst into that, let's let's back up a little bit and kind of look at the people we're talking about. Because we're, we're going into a, a crazy world here of really, really overweight people who, for the most part, don't think there's anything wrong with that. In fact, that's what all those terms are, body positivity, fat acceptance, thin privilege. When you get down to brass tacks, what these people think, uh, the idea that they have in their head, the, the philosophy they live their life by, is that uh, you know uh, morbidly obese people aren't um, sick or unhealthy? It doesn't affect your longevity, your health, your quality of life, um, your relationships, or ability to work or have fun or to really do anything. To them, uh, the BMI body mass index is just voodoo that was uh, dreamt up in the dungeons of some Nazi scientist, uh, with the whole point of oppressing fat people. And we're not really even talking about uh, people who are rationalizing. All right, there, there's a distinction here. You may be overweight, you may be fat, hell, you could even be obese, and you may not uh, really think it's that much of an issue, right? Specifically to you personally, you might not find it to be a big issue. However, to them, uh, fatness in general is completely fine. You may look at yourself, you might be overweight, like I said, and you might think, uh, well, shit, you know, I'm, I'm a big guy, I'm a big girl, whatever, um, and whatever, I'm fine with it. But you know, uh, deep down in the pit of your stomach, as big as that fucking stomach might be, that you are a fat person, and that generally, being a fat person has a lot of disadvantages. 
And there are reasons those disadvantages exist. You're doing, you're wreaking havoc on your body to begin with. I mean, you don't need to be a fucking physically fit person or a doctor to understand that. I mean, at some base level, I think everybody pretty much has it in the back of their head that, you know what, probably not the best thing. And this is the same with anything that's not done in moderation. Especially, you know, we're talking about fat people and overeating and that kind of thing. But anything without moderation is bad. Alcohol, cigarettes, it doesn't really matter. There are always negative consequences to the action. And most informed, normal, rational people understand those consequences. I mean, it's been put out there so much that there's no way you can really miss them. But to these people, those consequences are bullshit. They don't, they don't acknowledge they exist. For the most part, they say, um, you know, when you ask them or when you talk to them about this, you can be huge. You can be 400, 500, 600 pounds and be completely healthy. There's nothing wrong with that. There's no disadvantage. Diabetes and heart disease, uh, lung problems, circulation issues, not related at all to it, right? Their livers and kidneys, all the organs are functioning fine. Uh, the bone structure can handle that weight. You know, cardiovascular health is 100%. There's nothing wrong with being overweight, and that's in their minds, nothing wrong at all. What they eat, the kinds of foods, uh, you know, saturated fats, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. This whole notion of being thin and being fit is some kind of uh, perpetuated lie by media and by society in an effort to keep them down. And they see this as the oppression that they live with on a daily basis, and that's the mentality these people have. And so now that you kind of understand that, we can, we can jump head first. We can take a fucking swan dive right into the deep end of the crazy pool. And we're going to be doing that by looking at a Tumblr. Like I said, this is thinprivilege.tumblr.com. And I'm sure, uh, you know, a majority of you who are watching this video have probably heard of this fucking Tumblr. It's pretty infamous. Now, you could look at something like this and say, holy shit, this has to be somebody trolling. This cannot fucking be real. And you could be right. At some level, this might be the most elaborate troll, you know, that's ever been put out there. But the thing to keep in mind as we move forward, even if this specific Tumblr were completely fictitious, even if the people running it were just trolling out of their ass, there are a lot of people that believe it. That's the scary fucking thing. I mean, that's the scary fucking thing about Tumblr in general. And you'll see that as this series goes on, that uh, there, there are going to be a couple future episodes where we're going to look specifically at tumblers that created bullshit issues that were made by trolls just fucking around. And they actually were taken seriously, and it became something. That's how fucking nuts Tumblr is. So without further ado, right, now that we've got a basic idea of what we're getting into, let's take a look at thisisthinprivilege.tumblr.com. Well, we are off to a good start. This is Thin Privilege has an FAQ section. As you know, I, I don't like to be uninformed, and an FAQ section is great. It helps me check that privilege to make sure I don't hurt any special snowflakes and make them melt. So let's pop in here and see what we have. Hmm, number two seems interesting. What is thin privilege? Now, this has a little errata. It's got a little, a little warning up top. If you don't know what the social justice concept of privilege means more generally, then please read this first. Now, this links to a PDF document. It's a few pages long, and generally explains what privilege is, at least how Tumblr uses it. Uh, the interesting thing is, I'm not familiar with this website, Feminish.com. I'm, I'm curious what that could be about. Maybe it's a, a site about Legos, dedicated to building. Let's, uh, I have no idea. I've never been there. Let's go take a look. Hmm. Well, this has nothing to do with Legos. It looks more like it's feminism. Eh, I never saw that coming. Uh, not, I didn't foresee that. Not, not in a million years. I mean, why would this be related to feminism? I mean, you might say, it's because the majority of the site authors, all of them, perhaps, are female, obese females. Um, but not me. I didn't know that. So this is a shock to me. Anyway, back to what is thin privilege. Thin privilege systematically reduces each of us to our dress size, hip measurement, and waist size, then grants favors, opportunities, or simple lack of punishment when the numbers are low enough. Thin privilege exists no matter how it's won no matter whether the thin person wants privilege or not, no matter how much a fat person wishes they had access to those privileges as a result of their own good behavior, character, or health. So to sum up, if you're thin, you have privilege. There's nothing you can do to get rid of it. You can never absolve yourself of it. You're born into it. It's sort of like the left's idea of original sin. Any form of privilege really falls into that definition. You'll never shake yourself free of it. And that's exactly how it's used on this tumbler. Uh, let's see if there's more information. Maybe I'm reading too much into this. Oh, here's one. Where's the line between skinny and fat, or who has thin privilege? 
thin privilege exists on a spectrum and can be experienced contextually. The spectrum part means that though Susie might be fat, she could have more thin privilege than fatter Georgia and less thin privilege than thinner Maria. The contextual part means that within certain communities, people who would be considered thin in other communities might be subject to some kinds of fat discrimination. The way to think of it is, is that if you have access to something now that a fatter you wouldn't have access to, or if you're not subject to a form of discrimination a fatter you would be subject to, you probably have thin privilege. It's strange, but I'm left with a question. Now, based on how most social justice warriors and tumblerettes use the idea of privilege, it's this innate thing that you're, you're born with, you can't shake it loose, uh, a straight man can't just become gay, and a white man can't just become black and get rid of that privilege they have, but this, this FAQ, though, it seems to imply that a thin person can get rid of thin privilege by becoming fat. In this example, they're talking about Georgia and Maria and how they rate each other on this spectrum of fatness. So couldn't you technically become morbidly obese and have the least amount of privilege? I mean, if you shoot for the stars, if you, if you aim for the moon and you just eat nothing but moon pies and Twinkies and you gain 500, 700 pounds, who knows, and become fucking enormous, and then you tell somebody who, I don't know, runs this blog in particular, that uh, they need to check that fucking thin privilege, would they have to listen? But really, when you're looking at this, if you can get rid of it, in the context of how these people use it, it's not really a privilege, is it? I, I don't know, That that's probably the fat oppression speaking. All that mass media is making me say crazy things. Let's let's move on. Let's look at a few more of these questions. Get a better idea what we're what we're dealing with here. Oh, here's a good one. What about health? Let me make this completely clear from the outset that I do not believe health, however defined, is a reasonable measure to determine whether or not someone deserves respect, civil rights, and fair treatment. If you have a problem with how health markets appropriation your premiums or where your taxes go, then by all means, rage against the system. But do not think for a minute your assholeish behavior towards people you imagine use more than their fair share is justified. In fact, I'll go further and state that in my opinion, the modern conception of health is bullshit. It's an ever-changing, largely arbitrary definition that seems to serve a single purpose to blame modern ills on so-called unhealthy people, then define so-called unhealthy people as unpopular social deviants, like fat people, poor people, and the disabled. The philosophy of vaunting the modern notion of health to some kind of societal or moral imperative is called healthism. Perhaps there are those of you who ask, what about when someone's so fat it's medically unhealthy? Shouldn't you tell them to lose weight out of friendly or familial concern? Hell no. Why would your friends be a better witness to your experience than you are? If they are, then don't you have bigger presumed problems than your weight? Why would they know what's healthy for you better than you do? Again, if they do, don't you have bigger presumed problems than your weight? How in the world could you possibly avoid hearing, in our current cultural climate, that fat people should lose weight for their health? Treat people with respect. Don't infantilize or condescend to them. This is Adult Interaction 101 here. Further, it can't be said enough, the BMI, the General Classification System for Fat Health Oppression, is bullshit. Well, goddamn, I'm, I'm sensing a little hostility here. Oh, Miss Piggy appears angry. This seems uh, like it was written by somebody who was a little angry, a little, a little bit mad. But what really piques my interest is that third paragraph, uh, specifically talking about familial concern or friendly concern about your health. Uh, how dare somebody tell you that they're concerned about that? How, how could they know? better than you do uh, your current situation. Now, for anybody who's ever been a part of an intervention or seen one on television like A&E's intervention series, this strikes me as junky logic. I mean, let's rewrite it. Let's reword this. Let's pretend this wasn't on thisisthinprivilege.com, but uh, heroinjunkie.com. You know, uh, imagine this was a Tumblr written by a drug user. And just reword it. Take out all those instances of fat and, you know, uh, thin and replace it with... Uh, uh, drug use and sober. This could have been written by somebody who strung out on heroin. I'm walking on sunshine. I wish I had a father. Yeah, pretty much like that. Yeah, uh, that to a T, actually. Uh, this seems insane, really, to be honest. Uh, this is something I would expect a junkie to say. I mean, it's that, it's that fucking stupid. I, I don't know, maybe that's just me. Again, that's probably that fat oppressor deep down inside of me screaming about fat people because I'm just naturally programmed to hate everything. I'm a white male and I like women. So, God, you know, I'm responsible for slavery and the Holocaust and pretty think of anything, really. It's probably my fault.
uh, let's let's move on a little bit more. Let's look at a little bit more of this wonderful, wonderful Tumblr. Oh, here's one. Speaking of attraction, uh, but what if I'm not attracted to fat people? Why should I feel guilty about that? How is that thin privilege? Thin privilege exists on a societal level. When people, mainly women, are being seen in aggregate as less worthwhile dating and marriage material than thin people, being rejected for daring to be fat is fat discrimination, and hence being seen as better dating material by virtue of being thin is thin privilege. Dating while fat generally puts you at a disadvantage in a fatphobic culture, as if the likelihood of being a good partner has something to do with the amount of adipose tissue on one's body. Of course it doesn't. Not to mention that dating sites usually have you state up front in your profile whether you're fat or not, and there's an option for people to select if being fat is a deal breaker and a potential partner. And there's a whole meme about how fat people, usually women, pretend to be thinner on their profiles in order to ensnare poor fatphobic hot dudes. You know, I'm glad this Tumblr is obviously not written by angry, obese white women who are very, very upset that they're not getting laid. I, I'm, I'm just, I'm thrilled that this is written by not those people, because it so obviously is not written by them, right? This is, uh, this is crazy on a lot of levels, I'm going to be honest. Uh, essentially what it's saying is, if you're not attracted to a fat person, you're terrible. And there's no reason you shouldn't be attracted to a fat person, other than you're some kind of horrible fat phobic individual. As a side note, I don't get the whole phobic thing. The homophobic, fat phobic. I don't understand that. You're not afraid of them. I'm not afraid of fat people, I just don't want to fuck them. How is that discrimination? And they talk about being upfront on a dating site. Why wouldn't you be upfront on a dating site? Uh, you're talking about starting an intimate relationship with somebody, right? I'm, I'm guessing that's why you're going to a dating site. Uh, how do you build a relationship? You build it on honesty. And if you're not honest up front, then the relationship is a fraud. So I'm not sure what exactly they're upset about. Uh, from their standpoint, they're saying they're angry that they have to admit to being fat, really. I mean, is what it comes down to, because they are not going to be selected by the people they want to select them. Well, I, you know, uh, what do you want? Do you want somebody who doesn't want you and rejects you later on because you lied to them? Uh, do you want to date somebody who you conceive to be shallow uh, just because they're attractive? I, I'm not understanding exactly where you're coming from with this. You know, I, I think I'm starting to notice a bit of a trend here. Let's, let's see if that continues out. Uh, now, we looked at the FAQ, but let's go look at the posts themselves. Uh, these are put up by different people, and then the, the mods and the admins presumably pick the ones they like and throw them up. Thin privilege is going for an eye test and seeing a poster advising people that staying trim is a way to look after your eyes. Well, I, I'm, I don't get that. How is that thin privilege? That seems like basic medical advice to me. Uh, you know, be healthy, stay healthy. So I, I, maybe, maybe I need to get my eyes checked, because I don't see your fucking point with this. Uh, let's, let's take a look at another one. Maybe that's a bad one. Ah, uh, here we go. Thin privilege is not having to drastically change your normally quiet, reserved personality in order to be taken seriously by friends, coworkers, employers, or anyone in general. Well, that's just plain wrong. Uh, many people alter their behavior based on a social situation. I mean, that's, that's... That's completely mundane. That's everybody does that. You don't think people behave differently with their family and friends uh, compared to their office place or uh, church or synagogue or mosque, what have you? Uh, you don't think they they act differently? Of course they do. That that's not being thin. That's fucking being a person. Uh, let's 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 move on. Still, uh, I'm still not getting this. Uh, let's let's take a look at another one here. Uh, this is thin privilege. Not having a small child point at you and say, Look, mummy, look how fat that person is, and all the nearby people laughing as if it's cute, whilst you stand there, insulted and upset. Do you work at the circus? Do you, do you, I, I don't, how is that happening? Four times a day? Really? Four times a day? People will just gather in a circle around you and start laughing and commenting about how fat you are? No, I don't fucking buy that. This, this is complete bullshit. Uh, let's let's take a look at another one here. A thin privilege is not being concerned trolled by not only nurses, but also your online friends when you have an unrelated condition. I play an online MMO video game, in which I have a group of friends called a guild. My guild knows that I am well over 400 pounds in real... Okay, fuck this. I didn't know V had access to this fucking Tumblr. <laughs> this can't... This is not real. The, these posts are just stupid. This is just... Yeah, this is beyond retarded. 
Uh, just look at a few of these different headlines. This is just from the first 50 pages. There are 230 pages of these posts. Just take a look at this. Uh, thin privilege is having dogs play with you, apparently. Uh, thin privilege is uh, a choice in sexual preferences. Uh, thin privilege is woodwind instruments. Thin privilege is not being physically assaulted by your babysitter. What in the fuck are you talking about? Uh, apparently, thin children don't get molested or assaulted. That's that's part of their privilege. Um, thin privilege is being able to laugh at jokes about fat people. No, that's called having a fucking sense of humor. These people are beyond delusional. Uh, they're, they're just upset. A lot of these posts have to do with eating and feeling bad about it, or not being sexually attractive, or just being pissed off that they're overweight to begin with. But uh, the, what makes it really crazy like I said, it's not a rationalization. What makes it really crazy is they're happy to be fat. They think it's great, that there are no negative side effects to it, that everybody who tells them that are assholes and trolls, that being fat will not make you sick or die young. <laughs> what, what can you say to something like that? Well, I, I guess maybe I have one final thing to say. That picture I used in the beginning, yeah, that one, that particular picture happens to come from an article back from 2009 in The Guardian. The whole article in itself was simply her talking about her concern for her brother's health and how he was overweight and the impact that would have on him, and she was scared she was going to lose him uh, young in his life. It was, uh, you know, it's a touching article. The sad part is, two hours after she posted it, he died of exactly the things that she was afraid of. Just some food for thought, and God knows you love your food. How many kids die because of that word on a daily? Let me show you how many gallons of blood pour from kids' wrists because of that word. Let me show you how many families are broken because of that word. Uh, ahem, uh. So say the word one more damn time and use it in a song and insist it means nothing, and I just am offended by it. Say faggot. <laughs> Great work, everybody. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the third episode of Tumblrisms. Uh, apologies about the extended break, the brief hiatus, if you will, uh, between the last episode and this one. Uh, going forward, I'm looking to try to do a bi-monthly, maybe even a weekly thing with this particular video series. And what can I say, a hectic schedule? I got consumed with some things, and I just couldn't find the time to get this out to you. But hopefully that's a one-off thing, and going forward that won't be an issue. You know, fingers crossed. But enough of that. We're not here to talk about video scheduling. We are here to talk about Tumblr. And boy, do we have something spectacular today. We are talking about cis scum. And if you don't know what that is, it's probably because you are one. You disgusting, heterosexual dog. Now, generally, uh, these Tumblr terms seem to stay within the sphere of Tumblr, or at least within the sphere of uh, social justice warriors. You may see a little bit of it on, uh, I don't know, Reddit, perhaps? Eh, SRS? A little bit? But uh, for the most part, you're not going to encounter it uh, too much outside of the realm of Tumblr. This is a different story. This, this particular thing, this prefix of suffering that uh, has been, you know, given out so kindly, by the uh, special snowflake community to normal people is starting to find itself everywhere. You might even run across it in a few uh, sociology courses in college. You never know. You never know. Luckily, we have a Tumblr, as usual, to guide us through this this journey of exploration and learning, uh, and it's called DearCisPeople.Tumblr.com. I say let's jump in. Let's take a look at this and find out how to be more sensitive and better people. Well, it looks like our luck is holding up, as with the previous two tumblers we visited, this one happens to have an about section, where it sort of uh, lays the groundwork uh, for everybody who's visiting to kind of understand exactly how this community works. So let's, uh, let's take a look at that. Dear Cis People is a place for trans people to send an anonymous message to the cis population as a whole. It is meant to be a means of opening a communication line from people who are often silenced, either inadvertently or otherwise. Submit whatever you want, but while honest anger will come through, a small amount of discretion for certain things has been given to the admin. Control has been handed over to Amy, a trans woman slash former EMT slash LGBT activist, 
All messages are anonymous, because everyone needs a safe place to vent. Mecca Smith. Well, a la Akbar, Mecca. I think you've said it for everybody. There, everybody does need a safe place to vent, and it, it looks like this is a community for trans people to, uh, to vent about cis people. Now, if you're confused, what is a cis person? I think you'll start to get an idea of it as we go through these postings. Now, if you watch the other two Tumblrism videos, you know that I like to get a feel for the, the people running this. Before we get into the Tumblr, before we see the community itself, let's see who set it up. Right? We, we read the About section, and it's got some ground rules. There are other things there, too, like, you know, don't make death threats or uh, post people's personal information. Very blasé, very basic things that you would expect to find on any community on the Internet, really. But let's see who these co-admins are, because it says co-admin Tumblr 1 and co-admin Tumblr 2. So let's take a look at co-admin number one, Stolen Blue Box, and we've got an About Me section right there. That's, that's great. I'm kind of complicated. I'm an EMT, an LGBT activist, a digital designer, an audio engineer by training, a photographer, a videographer by passion, a hard femme transgender lesbian living out 24-7 and dealing with the world, friends, family, and being born with the wrong body. I'm also married to my wonderful wife. She is awesome. Also, my mammalian complex is the size of the Hulk. Imagine a Hulk shaped like a kitty, and that's my mammalian complex. So there are plenty of things like kitties and puppies and babies and wibbles. Let me be clear. Everyone can be called out at any point. Trans, cis, straight, gay, bipan, white, POC, able, disabled, neurotypical, neurotypical, feminist, people who are people, and the golden rule is people suck on occasion. All right, so that's, that's admin number one. A very interesting individual, I'm sure you'd agree. Well, let's take a look at admin number two. Let's, let's find out a little bit about, uh, about this person, the not-so-cliché world of W. About me. So who am I? Wit slash Whitney, white, 19, MAAB, trans female, gender fluid, 5'10", 155 pounds, BDSM enthusiast, subslave, born in Wisconsin, Going to school in Minnesota, majoring in American politics, minoring in women's and gender studies, and war, peace, and terrorism. Feminist. Trying to become more sex positive and body positive. Autistic. PC console gamer. Polyamorous. Sex worker. A lover of tattoos and piercings. Don't drink, smoke, do drugs of any sort. Atheist. Able-bodied passing. A lover of politics. Pro-choice. Pansexual. Demisexual. Cats. Aspirations to be a career trans right activist, politician, or a porn star. Well, just lovely. Just an autistic, atheist, feminist, transsexual. Okay. I think we all know, after reading these two, uh, these two bios, exactly what we're getting into. I, I, think, uh, I think we should all have a very, very clear idea of what Dear Cis People is going to be like. Well, now that we know who both the admins are and we've seen the About section, let's jump in. Let's find out what these trans people are like and what's so terrible about these horrible, horrible cis people. Now, I've taken the liberty of uh, grabbing a cross-section of different uh, postings on this particular Tumblr. Now, there are many pages, 70-plus pages, so I grabbed a little bit of each and tried to arrange them so you get a, a flavor, an idea, of what this community's like and what is exactly wrong with those fucking cis pigs. So let's, uh, let's take a look. Dear Cis People, Insisting you use my preferred name slash pronouns doesn't make me a bad person. Dear cis people, stop justifying yourself using the wrong pronouns. Dear cis people, it's not okay for you to call me by the wrong pronouns, even if you're quoting someone else. Dear cis people, pronouns are hard to adjust to. I get it. But at least make an effort and don't refer to me by my non-preferred pronouns when I'm not around. Just think, you may hate someone, but you still give them the respect of correctly gendering them. I'd like that same respect. Oh my God, I, I don't, I don't know how I could deal with this. These poor people, having others use their non-preferred pronouns. My God, I'd, I don't know how I'd react to that. I'd probably, I don't know, hide under my bed and board up the house and pray that it just stops. Now you may be saying to yourself, I don't know what the hell a preferred pronoun is. Well, you're in luck. I happen to have a list of preferred pronouns that's going to help ease you out of your bigotry and cis hatred, and lead you into the promised land of equality and rainbows. Now, you're going to recognize a few of these, uh, him and her, uh, she and he, they and them. I mean, these are familiar ones we've all grown up with and we've used uh, for a long time. But that's not where it ends. Now, you need to learn the new pronouns. Get ready. Uh, first up, we've got Z and here. Uh, that's Z-E and H-I-R. Uh, fee and per, P-H-E and P-E-R. 
Thon and Thon. That's a pretty easy one to remember. It's just Thon. Uh, e and M. But uh, the list doesn't end there. Uh, no, no, no. If you look on the side there, more gender neutral pronouns. Well, let's see what we've got. Z, Ni, One, Ze, Se, Ve, Te, I, Yoko, uh, Re, Ne, Hu, Te, Ve. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, my god, it sounds like he's speaking Klingon, you probably watch too much Star Trek. But uh, it's close. It's close. Now, this could be confusing. I mean, there are so many pronouns there. How do you, how do, you do it? I mean, these people are talking about, uh, you should always ask. And I know that from now on, that's what I'm going to do. When I go into a job interview, I'm not going to say hello. I'm going to say, excuse me, before we start this, allow me to ask you, what are your preferred pronouns? If I'm in church, forget communion. I need to ask the priest. Excuse me, what are your preferred pronouns? And of course, if somebody's being murdered down the street and screaming for help, I'm going to call that operator. But first, before I tell them where the crime is actually taking place, I'm going to be sure to address them by their preferred pronouns, and I'm going to ask them. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, oh my god, I'm a horrible piece of cis scum, uh, but I'd like a preferred pronoun. They, they sound kind of cool. How could I get one, even though I'm normal? So I technically probably shouldn't have one. Well, here you go. It's your own little chart. You can use it. Just take one from the first column and one from the second column, put them together, and boom. You're no longer just a cis piece of shit. You're something special now. Maybe you're going to be a cisgender, bi-fictive, pan-religious, pony spiritualist. It's up to you. How about a necrosexual, trans-ethnic, uh, heterospecies, cisgender? Okay. Maybe a polyphilic, a-abled, femi-romantic, paraspecies, non-religious, heterokin? Just remember, when you meet somebody, be sure to tell them those are your preferred pronouns. And make sure to check their privilege every time they forget that you are a other sexual, demi-ethnic, uh, trans-fictive, able-bodied, pan-pony. It's not your fault. They're oppressing you. It's their fault. Uh, dear cis people, one does not choose one's gender. One does choose one's gender's presentation. Dear cis people, I do not go on about gender. You go on about gender. I correct you when you misgender me. Sure. And then we have a conversation where you argue. Grammar and or convenience, and I have to explain dysphoria for the hundredth time. And then on the off occasion, when I have an opinion about gender, what with fast becoming an expert on it, you tell me I'm going on about it. Piss off, dear cis people. Please stop describing yourself as having accepted your assigned gender. You just happen by chance to match it. And saying you accept it implies that trans people are all just being fussy. And stop putting cis in those contemptuous commas, i.e. cis. It's rude. It implies you'd rather say normal. And you're not normal. There is no normal. And to imply that there is, is the single most bothering thing. Well, I'll be. That's a very good point. There is no normal. There is no statistical thing that exists that constitutes what being a norm is. That's a term that doesn't actually exist. If you asked a statistician or a psychologist or a sociologist and said, what is a norm? They would not be able to answer it because that's something that exists off in crazy land. Uh, clearly, this person is an expert on it. There is no normal. I mean, heterosexuality, that's just, uh, I don't know, it's what, 3% of the population? That's not normal. No, clearly, being transsexual is uh, is more normal, or equally as normal, even though statistically uh, transsexuals are what you would call an outlier from any population you might study. No, no, I, I'm sorry, I'm using those magical crazy words again that academics might. Boy, they sure like to talk about gender, though, don't they? Misgendering, gender me this, my gender, your gender, our gender, everybody's gender. Now, maybe you're one of those old-fashioned people that... Uh, still uses the term sex, yeah, male and female, right? Uh, one can produce eggs, one can produce uh, spermazoa. But uh, you would be behind the times. Now, we're using gender now, all right? It doesn't matter what you're born with or assigned with, okay? That's just society keeping you down. No, no, no. We want to talk about gender. And who better to, uh, you know, talk about gender with than the person responsible for the new current definition of it, John Money a renowned psychologist and sexologist who was the person who pushed it to the forefront in America and in psychology. In fact, John Money is the uh, origin point of all the shit these people spew. So what's John Money like? He must be a, a great individual, a very learned man, who's very tolerant and accepting and academically sound, right? I mean, that has to be the individual that's decided to create this division between sex and gender and spin it off into these wonderful things all these tumblers like to talk about. Well, if you were to, I don't know, take a moment 
to look him up on Wikipedia, you might uh, find a, a strange little link going to somebody called David Reamer. I don't know who that is. It must not be somebody important. I, maybe that's somebody John Money helped, right? I mean, I mean, he's somehow connected to John Money. Let's, I don't know, let's just take a look. What the hell? Uh, David Raymer, 1965 to 2004. Oh, he's dead. Oh, well, well that's, that's good, whatever. Was a Canadian man, born as a healthy male, but was sexually reassigned and raised uh, as female after his penis was accidentally destroyed during circumcision. That's a bit rough. Uh, psychologist John Money, oh, here's the connection, oversaw the case and reported the reassignment as successful and as evidenced that gender identity is primarily learned. Hmm. Hmm. That's interesting. So he used this as a foundational piece for his, his ideology, his philosophy. I, I guess this must have turned out well for David. I mean, here's John Money, the, the person responsible for putting this idea out there, and here's a case where a boy is you know, disfigured, but you know, John's like, hey, it's okay, we'll just cut the rest of it off and give you some hormone pills, call you Susie, and you'll be fine. Oh, wait a second, though. What, is this, what does this say? Academic sexologist Milton Diamond later reported that Raymer failed to identify as a female since the ages of 9 to 11, and then began living as a male at age 15. Uh, severe depression, committed suicide, financially unstable, troubled marriage. Huh, sounds like everything worked out well for him. Oh, you know, except for that whole suicide thing. But I, uh, you can't blame that on Dr. Money. I, let's, let's, he probably handled this with the utmost care. Oh, what is this? Uh, Dr. Money forced the twins to rehearse sexual uh, acts involving thrusting movements, with David playing the bottom role. David Raymer uh, painfully recalled that as a child, he had to get down on all fours with his brother, Brian Raymer, up behind his butt, with his crotch pressed against his buttocks. Dr. Money forced David in another sexual position to have his legs spread with Brian on top. Dr. Money also forced the children to take their clothes off and engage in genital inspections, and on at least one occasion took photographs of the two children during these activities. Wow. Uh, something, I think my spidey sense is tingling here. I don't know why, though. Let me see if I can put these pieces together. A man named John Money, a sexologist slash psychologist, who put forward the idea of gender as we know it today, and is the preeminent figure that pushed that forward in the American vocabulary, the vernacular. He put it out there. He's the one who said, hey, hey, sex and gender are different, is responsible for the mutilation of a toddler, for his molestation, his financial instability, his severe depression, and then his suicide. And to top it off, this particular case is the one he used as evidence that his gender identity theory is correct because gender identity is primarily learned, except for the fact that David Reamer killed himself. He killed himself. Well, you know what? I am a horrible cis oppressor. You know, I, I'm just a bigoted straight person. So what do I know, right? Uh, left field here. I'm just, I'm completely out of the ballpark. So let's move on. Let's, let's take a look at a few more of these. Uh, dear cis people, what makes you think we care about your approval? Well, call me crazy. But I'd say 70 pages of you whining about not being accepted makes me think you might care about being approved of. I don't know. Throwing that out there. Maybe I'm just crazy again and just off in left field once more. Dear cis people, just because I'm gay without a penis doesn't mean I like cock up my ass. I'm a dominant top. Get over it. Dear cis people, I'm a lesbian. Having a dick doesn't change that. Well, I think there might be a few lesbians out there that just might disagree with that idea. Uh, dear cis people, no one cares about your magical cis vaginas, as opposed to your normal cis vaginas. These are magical. They pull rabbits out of hats and make flowers appear. Dear cis people, having a vagina doesn't automatically make someone a female. Just like having a penis shouldn't make someone look male. Your cis sexism is showing if you believe that. Please check your privilege. Dear cis people, stop getting so pissed off when you're referred to as cis. Fuck you, it's not an insult. It's actually who you are. If you can't handle being referred to as cis, then try living a day in my shoes. You don't, and never will, be oppressed for being cis. Dear cis people, you don't get to have an opinion on being trans. If I come out to you, it's not a space for you to tell me all your thoughts on being trans, or for you to say you don't like it. It's me telling you how you're going to talk to me from now on. Dear cis people, yes, it's okay for minority groups to exclude those who don't belong to them. And no, the reverse is not okay. You belong everywhere else, and until we do too, get out! Well, they all seem to be wonderfully reasonable individuals to me. I mean, let's, let's just recap here. Um, trans people can't do anything wrong. 
Uh, if you're cis, uh, there is something wrong with you, but don't get offended if somebody calls you that. If you do get offended by being called cis, check your privilege. Trans people can talk about being transsexual, but you can't ask them about it. If you refer to them the wrong way, you are a bigot. Also, you're not allowed to be a part of any community they're a part of. You belong everywhere, so fuck off. And that's totally not racist or bigoted or any ism that you can think of, because it's okay. They're trans, and you're not. The weird part of this is, when you go through this whole Tumblr, they talk about all the hate they get. They go on and on and on about being misgendered, and about being oppressed and excluded. But really, what you're confronted with when you're listening to them talk, is them getting upset because they're not being treated differently. That's what they're really angry about. They say, we want to be like everybody else. We, we just want equal respect. Treat us like you would anybody else. The problem is, that's what they're getting. If you want to run around and tell people they have to speak a certain way around you, don't be surprised when they don't want to talk to you or have anything to do with you. This controlling behavior of trying to make other people behave the way you want them to is going to accomplish nothing. I mean, really, at the end of the day, I think pretty much anybody can agree, nobody likes an attention whore. Somebody who is desperate to be the center of everything and be treated differently than everyone else, whether it's on the internet or in real life. And that is exactly what this Tumblr is about. They want to be treated specially and different. They don't want equality. Equality would mean being called a dumb motherfucker and having to walk it off like anybody else would. No, they want to have the ability, when they're called a dumb motherfucker, to have the whole uh, of society turn around and say, oh my god, that's terrible. That poor oppressed person. We need to do something for that specific individual because they wanted to cut their penis off and call themselves something different. Get over yourself. Well, I, I hope this has been informative to all you cis-sexist uh, pigs and bigots and Nazis and racists. Uh, you're all horrible individuals. All right? Transsexuals can do no wrong. So remember... Die, cis, scum. <laughs>
Now sadly, as you can see, several chains and a naked sushi don't really have a lot of information on their Tumblr. Neither really have a, a biographical um, area to look at. They don't really talk about themselves. There are a few postings here or there on several chains. There are you know, a few reblogs and uh, a naked sushi or a chauvinist sushi when you get to the, the actual Tumblr itself has a few links to articles, but again, it's pretty sparse. There's not a lot of background details. Now, Dion the Socialist, on the other hand, does seem to have a little bit more information on his, but it's a very tiny blurb. You can see it in the upper right-hand corner there. I am the best blogger on the internet. My hashtag na no re mo project is called Asleep at the Controls, and it is a defense of our generation and a love letter to technology that shapes it. Read excerpts from it under my hashtag na no ri mo tag. And then, as you can see, he uses his Tumblr, obviously. He reblogs a few things and posts from Facebook and his Twitter account, making sure to, of course, blur out his name. But, again, there's not, there's not a lot of stuff here. This is kind of disappointing. Usually, I'm accustomed to kind of finding out who runs this, but these three people don't really share a lot. Now, the interesting thing is this links, or it says it's associated with, the Black Kids table, which was a website. Now, when I went to take a look for the website itself, there was nothing there. So I'm not sure if that means that the website is now closed, or if they, you know, lapsed on payments for it and so it got taken back. But it really is just talking about selling domains. And I don't think that's probably what it originally was for. Uh, luckily, you can find a little bit of the history on it on their Facebook page. Uh, that's still up. And it does link to a few of the older stories that I think were hosted on the website itself. But again, there's not, there's not a ton of stuff. It seems to be kind of abandoned or not used as much anymore, I guess. So sadly, we don't really have a feeling for who's running it. But you know what? That's okay we can go look at the FAQs, because that's going to help us. Let's get a feeling for what this, uh, this Tumblr is about. What exactly is the point of this blog? To compile one bajillion examples of white privilege. You're making racism worse by acknowledging race, you know. We're all a part of the human race. Race is a social construct. It is often used as a motivation for murder, genocide, war, and other terrible things. Those things happen because this country has been avoiding having a serious discussion on race. Let's all sit down, be adults, and stop pretending there isn't a problem. I'm white, and I love this blog, but the language you use seems so hostile and alienating. Why do you do that? Part of white privilege is that society is crafted to appeal to you. This blog, however, is a POC space, one that welcomes white people but does not craft its message specifically for white people. Therefore, you will naturally feel as if you were in a hostile environment. You will naturally feel alien. That's a part of being an ally. Confronting your white privilege, a gift you receive from white supremacy through the deaths of millions of people of color throughout the years, should make you feel pretty damn shitty. If you feel bad, it just means you're taking the first important step. Okay, so we have kind of a general idea of what we're dealing with here. This isn't specifically crafted for white people per se, but more a place for POC or people of color to bitch about white people. And if you look a little further down the FAQ, you'll see this, and it says, How can white people fight the white supremacy? And it links you to two different things. So let's, let's pop over and just take a, take a glance at what that is. Now, that leads us over to another uh, Tumblr. I don't know if that's associated. Earlier it said that this was run by four black people with attitudes and away with words. And if you noticed at the beginning, we only saw three people. And this is a fourth. Maybe this is the fourth person they were talking about. So it's a, uh, a blog post or um, you know, an essay, really, however you want to look at it. But let's take a look at a little bit of it and kind of see what, uh, what they're talking about. Fourth, I need media Hollywood, whoever, to realize that people of color can have complicated roles, dark skin, natural hair, and are human beings. Like Game of Thrones, obviously this story will contain more European slash white characters, has two African descent persons, and he's a pirate with less than 100 words combined, if that. I'm tired of all these stories, movies, books, making me feel like white people are the only people who ever had adventures, were heroes, have conflicts, and doubt their abilities even if they are excellent people. I'm tired of race being a way to reel in viewers with controversy instead of because it makes the sense that people of color should be involved in everything white people are involved in. Shows like NBC's Scandal need more light, but I shouldn't have to be excited because five of the 14 characters are people of color. The point is, we have a rich history of stories to be told. They can be just as good as Harry Potter, Game of Thrones, Dexter, and BBC's Sherlock or Supernatural. Well, what a fantastic appeal that is to all those different creators of uh, various forms of media and entertainment, be they authors or screenwriters, whether they're stationed in Hollywood or New York. Why, it doesn't show the least bit of egotism or narcissism or hubris to think that you should demand that somebody craft a story specifically for you, or just characters they created and spent years crafting, just because they don't appeal to you specifically. 
Now sure, somebody might be flippant and say, well, hell, if it bothers you that much, go write your own story, go make your own game, go produce your own television show or movie. But that would require work, and work is hard. No, it's much easier to bitch at authors and bitch at creators and tell them, I want you to make it my way, or I'm going to stomp my feet and shake my fist in the air. Kind of like this particular person. To J.K. Rowling! Yes, that is exactly as dumb as it sounds. And the funny thing is, Rachel and her Def Jam poetry will be forgotten in 20 years, whereas J.K. Rowling won't be. Fifth, white people realizing money is a part of privilege in a very real way. Let's see white people refuse their inheritance and give it to the Dream Organization or Black Youth or other self-development organizations run by people of color. Find the families of your ancestors and pay reparations to children of laborers. Rebuild places like Newark, New Jersey where race riots are still historically visible in broken down slash fire damaged buildings and not gentrify them like white people are doing now. Go to schools where white people aren't the overwhelming majority in both the classrooms and faculty rooms and see how different your education turns out. Well, hey now, see, we're learning things. I did not know that the best way to get rid of privilege was by giving black people money. Why, if I knew that, I'd just empty my bank account, and then I'd be guilt-free. It's kind of like confession in church. If you want to get rid of those sins, you got to see the priest. If you want to get rid of that white privilege, go give Jamal $25. Why, I don't see anything nefarious about that at all. Not a thing. Well, I think we have a, a good idea of what's waiting for us now that we've looked at the FAQ and met the people running the site and read a little bit about their philosophy. Now, just before we get started, I just want to say this is a really large Tumblr and it has a ton of posts. I believe 240, 250 pages of them. It's one of the biggest I've seen yet. So for the sake of brevity and my own sanity, uh, the cross-section we're going to be dealing with is about the first 20 or so pages. But believe me, there's a treasure trove of postings to read on this fucking Tumblr. And here's our first posting. It looks like an image macro. White people nutritional facts. Uh, appropriation, uh, 250 grams. Uh, privilege, 250 grams. This doesn't sound very nutritional. Not sure, uh, not sure a fittison would want to eat this. Uh, belief in post-racial society. Superiority complex, that's 300 grams. That's, that's pretty large. Culture, zero grams. That's interesting. Entitlement, uh, gentrification, genocide. Can't forget the genocide. It's part of a balanced meal. Need to use the N-word. N-word, I'm not sure what they're talking about. Maybe it's uh, astronomy related? Uh, Neptune? It's, uh, I'm, I'm drawing a blank. I'm going to have to come back to that, I think. Uh, and we've got another image macro. Uh, what would Grandma think? And there's a little, a little post-it note. Uh, something racist, probably, huh? And then posted underneath. My school is talking about internet safety or something? Well, we all know old white people are just horrible racist bastards. I don't think there's a good one out there. It reminds me of this guy, John Woolman. He wrote this little diary, this little little journal. It's pretty terrible. I think he kicked puppies and raped nuns, too. White people are irrid... Oh, my God. You know what? I just thought what the N-word might be. I just thought... It reminded me of that Garth Brooks song. Motherfucker. What's up, nigga? Gangsta rap, nigga. Nigga. Nigga, 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 nigga. I'm 100% nigga. Nigga. Nigga, 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 nigga. I'm two hundred percent nigga. Nigga, 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 nigga. Why do police hate niggas? Nigga, 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 nigga. They hate us because our dicks is bigger. Anonymous asked, racism is racism. Hating people for being white actually does happen, and it doesn't make anything better. In that same way, heterophobia exists too, and I can say I'm actually pretty ashamed that I used to think like that. People are people and should be judged on their actions, wouldn't you agree? Uh, the response? Please get back to me about that reverse racism and heterophobia when people start being murdered because they are white cis shits. So, I mean, Social Justice Wario is pretty great. Now, we have another one in a, a similar vein. List of white people who have been killed based on stereotypes. And, as you can see, that's, that's the list. Uh, the punchline, as it were. There's no list at all because white people aren't murdered for being white. It just doesn't happen. Again, we have a, a sort of similar one. Uh, so few words asked. 
We don't talk about Irish people on here because that would mean admitting that white is not a gateway to a perfect life, and I mean that would dismantle our entire victim complex. Like, this is why people don't take this blog seriously. But I know how this works. You don't actually want to show me anything or change anything. You just want to play the victim, so that works great for you. Educate yourself. Oh my god, stop oppressing me by asking me to put facts into my beliefs. I mean, come on. I just... slow clap. When did we say white people have a perfect life? Like, a bunch of you come in here, you get scared, you feel attacked, and I understand that. But you guys never try to understand what I'm saying. C.S. Colworth asked, What about white countries that never had colonies? I'm not Googling this shit just because you're lazy and don't have an answer to anything that challenges you. Response? And you're lazy for not looking it up. Damn, son, I ain't your teacher, nor your mom. I'm a fucking stranger who don't owe you shit. White people are really upset today. Whoa, a stranger on the internet won't do what I want them to do. I'm going to insult them and think they're so juvenile that they'll have to do what I want. Brilliant. C.S. Uh, below that, there was another one similar again. Asylvania asked, Did Irishmen in England in the 1970s have white privilege? Response, We don't talk about Irish people here. C.S. Official Dick Cheney asked, uh, For someone so opposed to racism, you sure are a fucking racist. Q, you're white, so you don't know anything about racism. Let's see. White privilege is hard for white people to see. How about black crime is hard for black people to see? Oh, got a better one. The enormous amount the country spends on welfare is hard for black people to see. Well, gee, those sound like a racist statements to me. You know, judging on a whole race-based stereotype. Response? Yeah, sucks, doesn't it? Oh, and white people are the number one recipients of welfare, just in case you didn't know. C.S. P.S. Your haircut sucks. Well, I think these are just brilliant points. White people are terrible, but they're also never targeted for being white. I mean, sure, Caesar marched an army to go exterminate the Gauls, but that doesn't count. And Slavic people, you know, the origin of the word slave, that doesn't matter either. You know, who cares about them? You could debate Jews whether they're white or not in the official and unofficial numbers regarding the Holocaust, but we don't want to talk about that. Irish people? Not even going to mention them. No, that would be too inconvenient and difficult to talk about. Clearly, white people are never oppressed. Just don't ever go to South Africa and try to run a farm. You'll get raped, beaten, and have your children lit on fire. Again, not going to talk about it because that's uncomfortable. I also like the fact-based analysis of welfare recipients in the U.S. that C.S. did here. Uh, granted, he didn't mention population sizes, but again, that's inconvenient, just like those Gauls, Slavs, Jews, Irish, and South African farmers. But of course, those are, those are old examples. I mean, the majority don't happen nowadays. White people are impervious to harassment for being white or for being targeted for being white. <laughs> I don't know where that idea comes from. I think CS is an intelligent individual. I mean, this, this, this kid, obviously, was making this up, Aaron Dugmore. <laughs> what a little liar. You know, the nine-year-old that hung himself because he was bullied for being white. That doesn't happen. And thank God, another Tumblr was around to explain it all to us. Uh, as you can see here, uh, this is problematic. Racism is not a thing against white people. Racism is power plus prejudice. What happened to him might have been horrible. It might have been highly prejudiced, but it was not racist. It is not your place as white people to attempt to define what is racist and what isn't. Please spare us your white tears. Well, I'll be sure to tell Aaron Dugmore's mother to try to spare her white tears so it doesn't offend you as her nine-year-old son swings from the rafters. You disgusting fucking pieces of shit. Number 1613. White privilege is having a normal last name. White privilege is not having others snub your family name simply because they can't pronounce it. Your ignorance doesn't make my culture wrong. Well, I agree. And to all the white people out there, remember, the dash be silent, yo. Pelea Princea asked, Can you please recommend a way for me to respond when my teachers at my new school continue to make comments about my ethnic hair and name? The response? Take a dump on their desk and say it's part of your exotic culture. Dion. Well, that's a brilliant way to conform to a new classroom environment. Be hostile and don't take the time to try to educate other people about what your name means and why you look different. People interacting with other people like they were normal and trying to bridge cultural differences? <laughs> that's silly. No, instead, shit all over the classroom floor and get angry at them for not accepting you carte blanche. That is the adult way to handle that situation. Number 1,615. White privilege is your white boyfriend continually refusing to acknowledge your race no matter how much you tell him it's important to you. White privilege is your white boyfriend trying to give you a colorblind excuse and say that all he sees is a human being, instead of trying to understand that you are a member of a race and how it affects you. Mod note, why the hell are you still with him? I agree. You should definitely dump the person who loves you and is trying to see you as a human being and not a member of some separate group. Why, that's just ridiculous. No, it's more important that you identify as black and segregate yourself off from anybody who might be different from you. That's not an unreasonable thing to do. 
So here's a question, because I've seen arguments like the following all over Tumblr, and I just thought maybe I could have this explained to me. If somebody has a fetish for black women, they're called a racist for exoticizing her. If somebody isn't attracted to a black woman, they're called a racist for being exclusive. If somebody is attracted to somebody regardless of the race, they're erasing their identity. So what's the right way to play the game? Response? This isn't a game. Take a step back. Realize what you just said. People have a fetish for shoes, for whips, for foods. These are objects. People are not objects. There's a difference between liking someone and objectifying them. I'm offended that you would even suggest they're the same. And don't put fucking quotes on terms you don't like. When someone is attracted to somebody regardless of race, this is not the same as saying they're colorblind, which is saying you don't see race. How fucking hard is it for people to view black women as people? Shit. Love me for me. Being black is part of me, but don't just love me because I'm black. It's not that hard. C.S. Well, Vagrant Constellations, let me answer that question for you. The only way to win this game is not to play at all. I recommend tic-tac-toe. Or dating Asian women. God, Asian women are just... just perfect. Several whites unfollowed us for a recent post we made about not wanting their voices here. We'd like to thank those white people and invite any other fair-weather white allies to unfollow them out the door. If you can't stand the thought of POC space where your voice is not welcome, you are not our ally. You are much too self-involved for this, and you are wasting your time and ours by pretending to be an ally. Dion. Reminder, white people are free to follow this blog and, like, reblog from it, as long as their attentions are good. But we really don't want to hear from you no matter what you have to say. We don't care if it's a compliment, a thank you, an apology, or an innocent question. This blog is a space for POC. The moment you enter it, you will be treated with the utmost hostility because we don't want your voice here in any capacity. Dion. Well, Dion, who wouldn't want to be your ally? It sounds like your side is the best side. I love to join a team that disregards my opinion and hates me just for the fact that I exist. That's somebody I want to back. That's somebody I want to march behind. You know, it's strange. This, this Dion person seems somewhat hostile towards people who come to this particular Tumblr. But again, I don't really know much about him. I, I just wish I could find out more about who Dion is. Oh, wait a second. What, what's this? It's a, it's a tweet from Tim, Tim Weiss. And well, somebody responding named Dion, and the picture looks just like the other picture from the Facebook posting on his original Tumblr account. Could it? Could it really be Dion? I don't know. Let's let's follow that up. Let me let me take a look at the the Twitter account. I think this might be the individual. Maybe we can learn a little bit more about Dion and see how we can best be his ally. Well, let's see. Writer, blogger, journalism teacher. That's interesting. What is this? Oh, it says down a little a little further down the way. I really want to be an admissions counselor. I really think that's the path for me. Traveling and helping kids go to college. And he tweeted that on the 18th of November, 2013. You know, I find that somewhat interesting. That Dion wants to, one, be a, a teacher in college, and two, be in charge of admissions, and who gets to go into college? You know, I remember I used to have this philosophy uh, professor, and he liked to do thought experiments. He said it really helped you try to evaluate something or look at something from every possible angle to really try to get a grasp of it. So let's, let's try a thought experiment. Let's do a little role reversal. Let's say, instead of thisiswhiteprivilege.com, this particular Tumblr was called, um, I don't know, Jumpin' Jack Jigaboos. You know? And every post on there was about how horrible black people are how black people are criminals and welfare recipients, how they're violent and they rape and they steal, and how anybody who has a different opinion other than that can't talk, and if a black person tried to come to that particular Tumblr, they'd be told to go away. And then, again, for the sake of argument and following our thought experiment, let's say we found out that the person who ran uh, Jack Jump and Jigaboos just happened to be a college professor, a white college professor, and he was in charge of, well, a journalism class and admissions. Now, ask yourself, would that person have a bias that might interfere with their ability to conduct their job in an unbiased way? I don't know. But again, it's not my place to speak as an ally. It's not acceptable to call me a nigger. To call me a chink. To call me a fag. To call me a kike. It is not acceptable to call me a retard or call yourself or your friends retarded. Welcome one and all to the fifth episode of Tumblrisms. Today we're going to be taking a look at uh, ableism. And if you don't know what ableism is, that's probably because you hate the retarded. Though I probably shouldn't have said hate the retarded, because then that makes me a terrible person too. Look at the influence you're having on me. Oh god. I need to associate with better people. That's what Tumblr's for. It's going to educate us. Because we're shitlords, and we need to be taught a lesson. And there's no better place to be taught a lesson than in the hallowed halls 
of Tumblr. Now, the format for this particular episode is going to be a little different. Before, in the previous four, we had one specific Tumblr we went to who was able to kind of guide us along and teach us what we were learning about that day. Uh, for this one, there's all sorts of craziness everywhere. So we're going to be looking at a bunch of Tumblrs. And when I say a bunch of Tumblrs, oh, you're going to love where this goes. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> Believe me. Because I was pretty amazed myself at a few, a few of the Tumblrs I particularly... <laughs> You're going to like it. Let's just say that. You're going to like it. So let's, uh, let's dip our, our toe into the ableism pool and find out first what the fuck this ableism thing is. And what better place to start our little journey of exploration than this is ableism.tumblr.com, which has a nice little info blurb about just what ableism is, located directly below the handicapped parking sign, which is below the category of fat and disabled, which I'm sure is quite, uh, quite a barrel of laughs. But we're going to we're gonna skip over that. We're going to exercise a little bit of that privilege we all have and just jump over that handicapped person, because God knows their legs are never going to work again. And we're going to read this, uh, this description. This is ableism. Ableism is a form of discrimination and social prejudice. Are you questioning whether or not something is ableist? Ask a disabled person. Heck, ask multiple disabled people. Able-bodied people, you do not get to decide what is ableist. The privileged never get to determine what qualifies as oppression. This blog will attempt to display disabled people's opinions on ableism. Submission of ableism you have experienced or witnessed are welcome, and so are examples of ableism you have seen on social media sites. If you have taken a medication and or visited a doctor and wish to submit a review, please feel free to submit that as well. There is a general trigger warning for the content on this blog. If I neglect to put a trigger warning on something that needs it, please let me know so I can fix it. I usually like to reblog a lot of the commentary on posts. Well, sadly, this definition really hasn't helped us pin down what that ableism thing is. Maybe if we, I don't know, maybe if we explore the user base, they can help point us in the right direction. Let's, let's take a look at a few of the posts that are, that are tagged with ableism and see if we can be enlightened. Flowers and Femme post, things able-bodied people should do before using the word invalid. Stop. Don't. Ever. Hashtags UG and disability. Well, clearly she's disgusted with the disabled. Why would you use those hashtags otherwise? It's a very brave position to take on Tumblr, but I'd like to I'd like to know a little bit more about Flowers and Femme. After all, we're trying to pin down this uh, specific definition, so let's find out exactly who this person is. About me. I figure I should have an About Me page, so this is me. My name is Hannah. Any pronouns go, but I get she all the time, IRL, so I'd rather not hear them here. Also, if you call me Miss or Ma'am or Lady, I'll curl up and cry. Don't ask, it's complicated. You can find more of my face here. I'm a queer femme living in the Sunshine State. I'm currently a college student at UCF. I love makeup, sewing, and covering things in glitter. I'm high femme, so you'll see a lot of that on here, but I try to keep things varied. Also, I'm chronically ill, and write about that sometimes. I usually tag it, chronic pain stuff. If it doesn't interest you, and you'd like to tumbler, savor it. Privileges, I'm white, thin, and middle class. If I ever fuck up, shoot me a message to let me know, okay? Okay! Autistic Will Graham writes, Just a reminder that unless you're physically disabled, you are not allowed to use the word crippled, because then it's an ableist slur, and you are ableist trash. Bye. Hashtags ableist slur CW. Disability. Even if you're mentally disabled, you can't reclaim the. And the About Me section says, My name is Madeline, but you can call me Mads, if you'd like. I'm just a college student studying ASL English interpreting in America. My sexuality is queer. I identify as non-binary, so please use they, their, them pronouns. He, him, his is okay too, but not her, she, hers. I'm aromantic, and most of my ships are QP. I'm autistic, and blog a lot about that. So yeah, who would have thought autistic William Graham would be autistic? That is a surprise. Next up we have Froki Appreciation Blog. Literally, if you are not disabled, disordered, ill, you have no right to argue with disabled, disordered, ill people on what words are demeaning, slurs, etc. to disabled, disordered, ill people. Literally, fuck off. I keep seeing able-bodied people often in ableism tags doing this to non-abled people. Literally, fuck off. You are garbage. And looking at their page, you can already see they are heavily disabled. This person, obviously, is retarded. The Pokemon and Sonic might clue you into that, but... I particularly like this post on February 2nd, 2014. I have old child pics of me on my training toilet while also on my computer desk. I was already a smart kid. Apparently in his world, shitting while you're on the computer is a fucking achievement. Somebody contact JP and tell all those needs. Pissing of those coke bottles is the mark of a fucking genius. 
Trans Headcold had this to say. Anonymous asked, I think most people use alcoholism as an insult because alcoholism is associated with being abusive and stuff. Hmm. It's almost like people are viewing others as dangerous predators based on neurotype, also known as ableism. Ask a trans head cold a question. Hashtag alcohol anon ask. My name is Kylie, and I'm the world's largest rodent. Pronouns they them there, or am ear. And there's a, a donate button located directly below the currently reading nothing. What a surprise. Who would have seen that coming based on the spelling of that introduction? No capitalization, a word that makes no fucking sense. Who cares? And uh, uh, who needs periods? Apparently, apparently not the brony. Ghostlove chimes in with, PSA, the phrase, were you dropped on your head as a baby or something, is incredibly ableist. As a parent of a child who was indeed dropped on his head, and who has a lifelong medical condition affecting the whole use of the right side of his body due to the traumatic brain damage, I take it personally, and I will speak up if you use it in my presence. Hashtags, we chum, parenting, personal. Well, I'm interested to find out more about ghost love. Let's, uh, let's take a gander. Quinn, 20-something, trans dude, parent, mentally ill, disabled, feminist, activist, writer, advocate, vice chair and voluntary area coordinator for Chatterbox LGBT group. All views here are my own and do not represent the organization I volunteer for. Well, fancy that, a mentally ill transsexual. Also, I do believe they are disabled. After all, they put mentally ill and feminist down, and as we all know, that's redundant. Maybe the dropping the kid on the head is hereditary, and their, their father slash mother slash trans other dropped them down the stairs as well. Would explain that god-awful fucking mohawk. Slither in and get comfortable rights. I love being triggered and victimized by ableist oppressors who refuse to recognize their privilege and claim their hurt feelings from being called out as ableist are just as valid as my feelings from being oppressed and having slurs used in my presence, especially right before bed, when I should be asleep. Hashtags, that shit is now removed from my Facebook. Gotta love friends showing their true colors. About, Dallas. They, them, there, 21 years old, Canadian, living in Delaware, gender queer, transgender, pansexual, Cerebral palsy, middle class, white, undergraduate student, artsy scientist. Well, that was a mistake. It was not as helpful as I was hoping. If only there was a, a tumbler or tumblers that could point us to what ableist terms are. I'm starting to get an idea, but I, I still have some questions. Maybe somebody could clear it up for me. Well, of course, what better place to go to educate yourself on privilege than feministdisney.tumblr.com. Can you give us a list of ableist terms? I know the basic ones. Stupid, retarded, lame, dumb, etc. Or is there a link? I don't quite understand ableism yet because I study words and how they morph into different meanings over time. But at the same time, I don't want to offend anyone or use problematic language. Anonymous. Feminist Disney responds, Just so you know, all I do when I get questions like this is Google them, and then go through with my own logic and make sure I agree slash add things. Which isn't to say it's wrong to ask, because I realize that once I blog about these things, I become some sort of amateur authority about them. But just saying, sometimes there's a quicker way than waiting ten hours for me to reply. Crazy nuts, insane, psycho, bipolar, etc. Bipolar when used to just describe something that isn't the disorder. You see a lot of that on Tumblr. Idiot. Here is a post discussing multiple words, exactly how and why to go about replacing ableist language, along with suggestions for alternative words and phrasing. And just in case you were curious, that link goes to whatprivilege.com to a post entitled Replacing Crazy for Ableism and Preciseness of Language. It's possible some words aren't listed here, or that we realize that in time that more words are ableist. It's a learning process. I would always just evaluate where your words find their power. Are they powerful because you're specifically pointing out why someone is wrong? You're being a privileged, inconsiderate person for saying X. Or are they powerful because they hearken back to a derogatory way of saying things slash seeing people and thrive off the comparison? Sarah Palin, you are so psycho-crazy. Edit, sometimes phrasing or dialogue can be ableist even if it doesn't include ableist terms. Like, if you think it's too aggravating for you to have subtitles on a theater movie so that a deaf person can enjoy them too, you might not be using ableist terminology, but it's an ableist type of statement. So now it seems like we're gaining ground. We've got a, a little bit of a list to work with, but let's see if we can expand that a little bit more. Let's see if we can find a, a post that helps to kind of explain exactly how many words out there are ableist. Not ah, perfect. These are ableist words, trigger word, ableist slurs. Stupid, crazy, dumb, lame, insane, moron, spaz, numbskull, dimwit, or anything with wit. 
weak as in that's weak, retarded retard, hysterical idiot cretin, gimp cripple psycho, she he is so bipolar, she he is so OCD, schizo lunatic loony, batshit, there is some debate about this, but bottom line is most people couple it with crazy, so the ableism comes into play, nuts, same as batshit, mad, not angry mad, crazy mad, derpy ditzy, I'm so ADHD today, or variations thereof, it's like I have Tourette's or something, or variations thereof, tagged disability language ableism. So it would appear that it's not just language that's ableist, but it's thoughts too, like in that first example of uh, not wanting subtitles in a theater movie because that would, that would disadvantage a deaf person, but also using any language related to being insane or having a mental disability apparently is ableist. I still, I still wish we could get a little bit more. Uh, there's got to be a better authority out there somewhere. Oh, I know. Shut up, TeamWolfFandom.tumblr.com. That's the authority we need. It should go without saying, but trigger word for ableist words on this page. Ableism, for those that don't know, is discrimination and or prejudice against people with disabilities. In the lovely world we live in, ableism is institutionalized in our society, basically meaning from birth people with disabilities are marginalized by societal and governmental institutions. Here at Shut Up Team Wolf Fandom, this term is going to extend to all kinds of disabilities, including mental illness, disabilities, prejudice against which is sometimes called sanism. So now that you officially know what ableism is, it should be pretty obvious that slurs dehumanize other people with disabilities are pretty awful. The problem is, so many of these words have become a part of our vernacular, to the point where saying them is almost an unconscious reaction to some situations. Trying to cleanse your personal dictionary of ableist slurs can be a difficult thing, especially when there doesn't seem to be another word that carries the same weight, and colloquial meaning. But here's the thing, using words can make you an ass, so if you learn that it's inappropriate to say these things, and continue to do so, you are an ass. These words are abusive and harmful, and any time you use them, you further the marginalization of disabled people. I'm glad to know that Shut Up Team Wolf Fandom really takes this seriously. I wonder who runs this great Tumblr. Obviously, they're on point. They must be quite the individual. I will suffer no humans. Ian23, Slytherin, INFP, Hot NNT Mess, Hopeless Fanaby, It Its, Pronouns or Bust, Caution, Incest and cannibalism. I like angels, aliens, intersectional feminism, mad pride, BDSM, non-Euclidean emotions, blue and orange morality, intra-guild predation, consensual tentacle sex. Let me just, let me say that one more time. Consensual tentacle sex. And snuggling. Well, he's a romantic. You know what? I think, uh, I think now we need to have a talk between myself and you the viewer because this is the the fifth episode we've done of tumblrisms and i think you're noticing a trend or at least you should have noticed a trend between all those posts that i showed you and those tumblers that we just went over i mean what was the common theme in every single one of them everybody was special they were as far from normal as you could possibly be they were the anti-mundane they were transsexual they were gender fluid they were a romantic polyamorous ponykins they, you know, anything but normal, because God help you if you're normal. That's not interesting anymore, is it? Everybody needs to be unique and stand out. Every single one of those people, every single one of those posts was a college-age kid or somebody in college. They were transsexual or bisexual or any sexual other than straight or just gay. They were activists for every kind of organization you could imagine. And they all love the idea of self-flagellation, because that's so great, because they're just so guilty of imagined crimes, and that's what ableism is. Now, yeah, when you get down to it, when it's when it's just at the end of the day and you're really thinking about it, being a dick to somebody is being a dick to somebody. You don't need to brand that as something. You don't need to create a new term for it. Calling somebody a retard who actually is mentally handicapped might be a little bit cruel, but trying to say that using words that were actually created to define a condition is wrong or that using words that happen to fit a circumstance or a context is wrong is just silly. Using words like crazy and insane and stupid are not going to make somebody who is retarded feel bad. They aren't going to be aware of your fucking conversations when you're not around them. However, these people would have you think that just by uttering those phrases, that somewhere out there, some autistic child is getting beaten because you said retard as a punchline to a fucking joke in a bar. 
there's this term out there that's called Poe's Law, which basically states that there's a point where parity becomes so close to the extreme forms of something that they're indistinguishable. And that's really what's happened to social justice, and especially on Tumblr when you look at it. You cannot tell a fake parody from the real fucking thing anymore. Because these people have gone so far off the fucking deep end that it's just, it, it, you can't, there's no difference. You cannot tell anymore. They have been co-opted by the hypersensitive. In fact, if you want to see a, a particular example of this happening in real life, go look at Occupy Wall Street. What did you have with Occupy Wall Street? You had a movement that was dedicated towards the idea of removing corruption in government and finance. They wanted some banking reforms, they wanted to end some political dirty dealings. Sounds great. Who would disagree with that? What, what group of Republicans or Democrats would say, no, I want corruption. No, I want illegal activity. Nobody's for that. So Occupy Wall Street had a good platform to start with. And you got all these people gathering up, and yeah, there were some, some hipsters and some hippies and uh, liberal pot-smoking retards, but for the most part, they were on point. For the beginning, they were. But what happened as time went on? They got co-opted. They got co-opted by people who came in with their own agendas and their own ideas, and they poisoned the well. This has happened time and time again. We saw it with Atheism Plus. We're seeing it in gaming, and it happened in Occupy Wall Street. There's a specific moment where that movement dies, and that is a Stephen Colbert interview. When he has two people on, Occupy Wall Street had the chance to send anybody they wanted to go on national television to tell the American people what the fuck that movement was about. And who did they send? Did they send the most articulate person? Did they send the person who understood their talking points? Did they send the person who knew how to get the message across to mainstream America that, hey, we're out here fighting for what you should be fighting for? No. They sent somebody who came and introduced themselves as ketchup and said they were a female-bodied person. That was the death knell of Occupy Wall Street. When they started introducing things like the progressive stack, when they started fighting for Native American rain dance rights and setting up no rape zones, instead of focusing on what people were there for in the first place, that's when it died. And that is what's happening to social justice. What is social justice accomplishing on Tumblr? It is a fucking joke. It's a laughing stock. And I really want to cement this point. And I'm going to prove it to you right now. I'm going to read you the craziest fucking thing I can related to ableism. And I want you to really think, is this real or isn't it? It has reached a point of Poe's Law where you can't even tell anymore. So don't Google search it, all right? Don't go and look on a website and see, is this real or not? I want you just to listen. After hearing all the things we've heard from Tumblr about social justice and patriarchy and privilege and all that bullshit, I want you to listen to this. And I want you to honestly ask yourself, is it real or is it fake? This is from xtrung.tumblr.com in a post entitled Trigger Warning, Singletism, Ableism, Fat Shaming. Journey to the Sacred Heart. This is the About section. Jen, 23, cisgendered white female, tortoiseskin, disabled, singlet, gainer, vegan, feminist, fat activist, pansexual, demiplatonic, aromantic, asensual, likes, Knitting, sewing, cooking, gardening, eating, human rights, animal rights, human animal rights, fat acceptance. Just your average queer fat vegan tortoise trying to discover herself. My passions in life are vegan Japanese cuisine and dismantling the hierarchy with my best friend Justice. Justice, 23, gender fluid fab, all pronouns acceptable, racially mixed POC, pansexual but currently abstinent. Trans activist, hardcore vegan activist, animal rights, organic raw veganism, former OS, anti-racism, ed recovery, BDP OCD, likes pranic nourishment, superfoods, animal rights activism, veganism. And this post is from Monday, July 23rd, 2012. Trigger warning. Singletism, ableism, fat shaming, trans fat shaming, cutting doctors, hospital, mental hospital. Jen here. Sorry I haven't been posting. I recently suffered a terrible injustice at the hands of a bunch of singlest, ableist bigots. It all started when I was having dinner at my parents' house. My mother inevitably made several cruel remarks about my weight, my veganism, and the amount of food I was eating. She started talking, talking about the possibility of decreasing my food allowance even more or cutting it all together and buying all my groceries herself. Eventually, she told me I needed to see a different therapist as well as a nutritionist because, apparently, purposely gaining weight is insane. According to her trans-fatness, 
isn't real, and I am just addicted to food. I was furious, but I tried to stay calm, for the sake of my headmates as well as for the sake of my food allowance. Derek was present and listening the entire time. Derek hates the body and resents being trapped in it. He is also very prone to harming it. At some point, I lost control. Derek took over, swore at my mom, then ran to the bathroom. Al Goral, Coralot, Momo, Toshi, and I were present the entire time. Derek found a razor and started cutting. He hadn't bothered to lock the door. My mom found him and wrestled the razor out of our hand while my dad dialed 911. I ended up fronting at the hospital. A lot of what happened is a blur. I tried to explain that I wasn't self-harming and that I'm part of a multiple system. The doctor had no idea what I was talking about and asked my parents if I had been evaluated for schizophrenia. My parents basically told the doctor that I faked DID for attention. The doctor forced me to be put on a 72-hour hold. The mental hospital was a separate hospital, so I had to be taken there in an ambulance. Honestly, don't recall too much about it. Let's just say that the medical and mental health system in our country is deeply, deeply ableist, as well as singlest. I had to lie about my multiplicity, a large part of my identity, just to get out of there. I had to tell my headmates to lay low. They were not allowed to front for 72 hours. If any of them did, we would all have been forced to stay in that prison where we weren't allowed to be ourselves and where some of us weren't even allowed to merely exist. Not only that, but they had me on a reduced calorie diet while I was there. Scoff. No surprise, really. We were released some days ago. The others have been fronting a lot to make up for lost time. My parents are angry at me and insisting that the whole ordeal was just me attention-seeking and taking it too far. They keep telling me that I don't have did, and when I tell them that I in fact do not, that I have what is called natural multiplicity, they tell me I'm making up illnesses. Natural multiplicity is real, and it is not an illness or a disability. I wish they would allow me to educate them about these things since I actually know a lot about them, seeing as I experience them only every day of my life. Yeah, obviously, I've been fighting with my parents a lot more than usual, but they haven't decreased or cut any of my allowances, so I guess I can still handle all the arguing for now. Again, I'm sorry for my absence, but I've been in a bad place, both literally and figuratively, and I have a lot to think about. I should be posting more regularly now. Thank you all for bearing with me. And of course, the tags include singletism, ableism, fat shaming, cutting, self-injury, depression, and OC. Now you tell me, after hearing that, was that fake or was that real? All those terms, all those ideas, headmates and privilege and feminism and activism and all these different sexualities and fronting and multiplicity, we've all heard this before. Fat shaming and trans fat shaming and body positivity and now ableism. And that's what it's going to be associated with from now on, are these other ridiculous concepts. In fact, if anything, ableism is the punchline to the joke, what happens when college students have too much fucking time on their hands? It's simply another way for them to police other people. First by admitting that they've done something terrible, because then they can take the high horse, they can take the high road, and tell you how terrible you are. Because they love to do that. That is their M.O. They infest a movement, they introduce ridiculous ideas to the movement, and then they fucking destroy it. They murder it. They strangle it. And the newest weapon in their arsenal, the newest mace to hit people over the head with, is ableism. It is a buzzword, it is a catchphrase that is meaningless. And you'll see it pushed. Again, ask yourself, why are all these people college-aged? Why are all these people in college? And why are they all using the same terminology? It's coming from a central source. And maybe later on I'll do a video on that, because it might be interesting. But that is ableism. A joke. A stupid, retarded, insane... <laughs>
They need your sympathy. You need to signal boost their suffering. And so to do that, I've made this informational comic. Because I know, I know Tumblr loves to do that. I know they love their little, their little comics that explain, you know, complex ideas to idiots like us. All right. Well, we've got this little guy here, and he's going to represent, I don't know, an entire group of people. Now, we need something to represent his culture, his heritage. I don't know, a bike. Let's say this bike represents his culture. Look how, look how proud he is of it. Look at him pointing. He is very proud of his culture. Everything would be fine. This, this lovely neighborhood, this group of people and their culture, everything looks fine. But uh-oh, here comes the white man. Look at him. Look at those beady little eyes. He's, he's up to something, I tell you. Now, at its core, cultural appropriation is theft, at least if you're white. Remember the simple mantra. If they're white, it ain't right to use anything ever made by anybody else, because white people are thieves. Horrible thieves. Look at him. Look at him ride that bike. He took it. He took that culture, and he is riding it off. He doesn't care. Look at that little guy. He's so sad. Then that white devil doesn't care a bit about his culture. He's popping a fucking wheelie. And does he does he feel any remorse? Nope. He just rides off into the sunset. Another white oppressor, part of the patriarchy, riding that, that culture down the road. He's bunny hopping that culture. He doesn't give a shit. That's not his culture. He doesn't he doesn't care. It's just entertainment for him. And that essentially is what cultural appropriation is. Cultural appropriation is any time a white person takes anything or uses anything from any other group of people. It's very important to understand. Very, very important. Well, with that out of the way, it's time to educate ourselves, shitlords. Let's jump into Tumblr and let's learn about this cultural appropriation thing. And what better way to start us off than a post by Toxic Nablua. Why do white people get so incredibly furious and self-righteous when people of color ask to keep one fucking thing to ourselves? Doing your best to wipe out entire civilizations wasn't enough for you? Dehumanizing and colonizing us for hundreds of years wasn't enough? Continuing to benefit from our oppression, past and present, isn't fucking enough? You still feel like you have the right to every tiny scrap of our cultures that we've tried desperately to keep alive after you spent centuries trying to wipe them out? No, get the fuck out of my face. Hashtags Hina appropriation, cultural appropriation, racism. Well, I feel terrible. What what poor culture is this girl from where she has been so oppressed? Let's let's take a look. Let's introduce ourselves to Toxic Nablua, manic depressive pixie dream girl, nausea, 18, poet, vegan, biracial, queer, feminist, gender weird, girthing, Sorry, sorry, girl thing, and mystical creature, fay, fear, foe, fars, far self, or <laughs> day died, <laughs> day died, day, day self, she, her, auxiliary. <laughs> well, fee, fi, fo, fum here obviously smells the blood of cis scum. Stop oppressing this mystical creature, you fucking horrible white people. I know you've been slaying those giants and griffins, but she is suffering because of it. Don't you appropriate her culture with your dungeons and dragons, you evil cis shits. You don't know what it's like to be a mystical creature in this day and age. You can't understand that oppression. Usag is Bun's response to the comment, I don't think white people with dreads is cultural appropriation. Please stop and actually read up on what dreadlocks are and what they symbolize and then get back to me. Jacob talks cultural appropriation. Well, Usagi's is buns obviously is a wise individual. Let's um let's see how much of an expert this person is. Pills and potions. Jacob 14. Pan gender polysexual. Bun buns bun selves. Pronouns. Well, obviously when a 14-year-old polysexual referring to themselves as buns tells me that dreadlocks are a sacred sacred thing, I got to listen. Because 14-year-olds are renowned for their intellect and insight. But this does raise an interesting thing. When you're going through Tumblr and you're looking at cultural appropriation, you're going to see a lot of posts about dreadlocks. That is, that's a big issue. Lots of people saying, you can't wear dreadlocks unless you're black. I mean, even Usagi's bun says, go educate yourself. You don't understand the importance and significance of it. 
Well, since I'm just like them, lazy as all hell, let's uh, pop over to Wikipedia. Right, that's the, the resource of all information in the fucking world. Let's see what Wikipedia has to say about dreadlocks, because I'm sure that fucking place is going to have an article on it. Well, would you look at that? Wikipedia does have an article. And it obviously tells us that only black people have ever worn dreadlocks. I mean, sure, it mentions the Spartans, but Greeks aren't really white. They're obviously African. Neanderthals and Cro-Magnum. All black. In fact, if we look at the Cro-Magnon article, what does it say here? Uh, obviously, black's in there somewhere. Wait a minute, what is this? Early European humans. Black people. That's what they meant. Black people. Indigenous Europeans. No such thing exists. 43,000 years. Hmm. Nope. All black. I mean, white people, would you look at this face? That poor Neanderthal. You're appropriating his culture. Wasn't it enough that your species wiped him out? You wiped out that subspecies, white people. Shouldn't you Shouldn't you not appropriate his dreadlocks? That's just terrible, really. What are you doing? Now, of course, usage is buns. He's all about making sure hairstyles stay with the indigenous groups, the, the culture, the place that it derives from, right? Like, he, that's a big thing to him. In fact, Tumblr really, they're really on the game in regards to this. Don't you, you horrible white girls, don't you take those dreadlocks. We know what you're up to, whitey. But of course, they fail, they kind of gloss over just one tiny little thing. Now let's keep it real. Black girls, we know what your fucking hair looks like naturally. Nobody's addressing weaves up on Tumblr, are they? You don't understand the suffering of my European ancestors when you straighten your hair. Can you hear the weeping? I, I know it's kind of distant, but all those dead white girls are weeping because you straightened your hair. What are you doing? You horribly culturally appropriating oppressors. I just, I can't even right now. I just can't. Danae Gregory writes, I'm going to be completely honest. If you aren't Native American, and more specifically Sioux, you really aren't able to say the costumes dances aren't isn't racist. You don't have the right to say something isn't cultural appropriation if it isn't your culture. Dance moms, cultural appropriation. I have to see why this person would put dance moms I think I had a brain fart. Why is the, why is Dance Moms a hashtag with this? How does that, what? I don't know how those are interrelated, but I'm dying to fucking know. Let's go take a look at Dana Gregory's profile to see if we can parse this out. Yes, all women. A vaguely Dance Moms Little Dancer's Opinion blog. One time, Kalina Hiker complimented me. This blog is purely my opinion, based on my own experiences as a dancer and choreographer. I'll also probably post about other things. And you can see there, in the background, I've cropped it out a little bit, but there's a woman pole dancing. Well, all I have to say to Dana Gregory is, stop appropriating slut culture. Pole dancers have a deep and meaningful heritage. And when you pole dance and you're not a whore, why, you shame them. So unless I can stick dollar bills in your ass, you shouldn't be pole dancing. Or your children shouldn't be. Because that's just weird to begin with. Marxist Feminist Sports writes, What's the difference between white people and yogurt? If you leave yogurt alone for 200 years, it will develop its own cultures. Bazinga. Hashtags white people, racism, cultural appropriation, yogurt, lol, keeping this joke. Androgynous Dryad writes, Friendly reminder that on point is A-A-V-E. That's African-American vernacular English. And anyone who is not black and says it is participating in racism and cultural appropriation. Hashtags friendly reminder, racism, cultural appropriation, A-A-V-E, I'm white tag. You know, I'm starting to kind of pick up on a, a common theme. If there was only a way for me to, to illustrate it for you, you viewers out there to try to highlight exactly what it is, cultural appropriation is code word for on Tumblr. There's got to be a way to do that, but I just, I'm not, I'm not intelligent enough to figure it out. After all, I'm a white man. I don't have to be smart or think. The patriarchy takes care of all my needs. But maybe if we press on, we'll be able to find out more information and try to, try to pinpoint this, to, you know, focus in on it. We are all real mixed up, responds to an anonymous comment. I was in the car with my white family, and we heard a news story on the radio about a frat party at a school in California called a Fiji Islander Party. A student complained about the obvious cultural appropriation. My family couldn't believe this. 
they were making fun of the student who complained and telling me cultural appropriation doesn't exist in America. They said everyone in America shares a culture. How do I explain cultural appropriation to them without offending them? Thanks. And they respond. So I actually shut down a Jamaican me crazy frat party with the help of two other officers, diversity and equity office and the dean of students office at the university that I'm currently work for and OI. Our administration is super supportive of getting rid of discriminatory based. Last incident of blackface happened this year, ugh. So it was shut down right away. But dealing with a bunch of whiny frat boys over how we are oversensitive and party poopers was awful. It took a code of conduct officer, forced anti-oppression training, and three letters of apology to even get them to admit they were wrong. Here are really great articles on cultural appropriation, here and here. Also, check out our cultural appropriation tag. If you have any questions, my personal inbox is open. Samantha. Well, you know, I am, I just love to pursue knowledge. And those links look like they could be helpful. Now that first link, it leads to another website. And you know, it has articles, but it's mostly essentially what you're going to find on Tumblr. The second link, however, I think this one might really have some fucking insight for all of us. It leads to a, a Tumblr profile, Swanblood. Let's, uh, let's take a look. Swamp Pinions, Sue, 18, 5 foot 2, birdie bird 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 face, aromantic, gray sexual, Japanese cis autistic, pronouns as she and her. Shocking that we keep finding so many autistic people related to these things. Could not be a coincidence at this point. I really don't think. Well, I'm sure that's just, they're just inclusive. That's why there are so many autistic people related to this Tumblr stuff. They want to be inclusive. They don't discriminate. They're very proud. Social justice warriors are very proud to admit how autistic they are. I think we should give them a round of applause. <laughs> I think that's admirable. That's very brave of you, social justice warriors. Thank you for, uh, for being so inclusive. Ashkenzi Audi responds to an anonymous ask. So I'm a Jewish girl who sings professionally. This means that on Sunday mornings, I sing in the choir of a Christian church because I was hired to do so. Anyway, last week, the choral director randomly decided to incorporate the Shama into a choral piece. I was totally affronted. First of all, that's some serious cultural appropriation. And secondly, they were pronouncing the Hebrew all wrong. But I can't quit because singing in the choir is my primary source of income. It was awful. And Ashikanzi Adi responds, That is actually kind of terrible. If you want to talk about cultural appropriation in relation to Jewish tradition, you can check out the blog Goinif. How badly were they pronouncing the Hebrew? I can safely assume they are getting the N sound wrong. Ash eggs, cultural appropriation, Jew, Jewish, and Hebrew. Well, before we go and jump and check out that Goinif blog, let's take a look at Ashikanzi's profile. Let's educate ourselves. Ashikanzi Adi, or Ashira's blog. This is my personal blog. I run, I once had a Goy tell me, as a side blog. No, I'm not a Zionist. <laughs> oh, God. Oh. <laughs> it's a great flag, man. <laughs> it's a great flag. Oh, shit. I'm not a Zionist, Goy. Calm down. You're aggravating my asthma. <laughs> oh, I don't know. That's, that's Jewish people, by the way. They're all, they're all horribly asthmatic. That's, that's in case you didn't know. I've educated you on Jewish people. Trans Carlos is responding to Arson 3 Cupcakes. For the last fucking time, it is not racist to point out that something can belong to more than one culture. If anything, you're the racist one for assuming someone's for ace, treating white people like scum when they don't know what they did wrong in the first place, allowing your followers to attack the same someone, and even when they finally caved, you did not apologize for the pose. You simply said that they backed off, and so should everyone else. And Trans Carlos replies, It's racist to appropriate the culture of POC, which is what you are doing. Allow my followers to attack them. I don't control them. I'm not their freaking monarch or anything. I never condone sending hate through, so I don't know what you're talking about. Oh my god, you literally just called me a reversed racist. Oh my god. Hashtags, arson three cupcakes, scientific inquiries, and hate message. Well, let's find out more about Trans Carlos. Icon by Queer Coded Villain. I track Trans Carlos. Misha, Misha, NB, they, them, there, or C, cell, cells, cell, self. Read my before following. Intersectional feminist, uppity black princex, autistic, fictional kin. Don't use gendered terms on me unless we know each other. 
ask me if you need something tagged. And of course we've got our, our donate button because hey, you know, blogging on uh, Tumblr is fucking hard work and they need to make a little money. Now, obviously to buy the rest of that fucking cutlery set because they've only got three out of five spoons. So get on that and give them money. Now I'm going to level with you. There is a lot of cultural appropriation talk on Tumblr. Anything and everything you could think of, they're going to bitch about. Halloween costumes? Highly inappropriate. Are you trying to learn another language? Stop it, you horrible white oppressor. Obviously, you just want to reestablish colonialism. Not communicate with other people, no. We know what your nefarious purpose is, and Tumblr isn't going to let you get away with it. So you put down that Spanish book, you horrible cis white het pig. Now, if you think these shit-flinging monkeys are bad enough on their own when it comes to the average everyday user, you haven't seen what they do to a public figure. I'm going to show you a couple examples of this. The first one's Avril Lavigne. Now, you may know her from being a horrible fucking pop star that hasn't written a good song ever. Well, about a month ago, she released a, a music video, uh, Hello Kitty. Now, for anybody that's older than the age of nine, you may remember this uh, when it was originally called Harajuku Girls by Gwen Stefani. Really original there, Avril. Apparently, Tumblr didn't like this. They saw her as the evil white conqueress going to the land of the rising sun to oppress those poor Japanese people. So I'm going to show you a post of just how they reacted. And you can see how reasonable this is. So allow me to uh, set the stage for you. This is a post by Political Sex Kitten. And it's in reference to Avril Lavigne's music video. Now Avril was already getting flack over this. And so she tweeted out responses to people saying that she was a, a horrible racist. Racist, lol lol lol, I love Japanese culture and spend half my time in Japan. I flew to Tokyo to shoot this video. Specifically for my Japanese fans, with my Japanese label, Japanese choreographers, and a Japanese director in Japan. So that was Avril's response to people saying that she was just trying to oppress the Japanese. So how did Political Sex Kitten take it? Well, this is how she took it. So these tweets are actually real? I really like how she tries to defend herself by stating how much she loves Japanese culture. You guys, I did this with Japanese people, so it's cool. I go to Japan just like so much, okay? I know the culture. I know so many Japanese people, even the director was Japanese. God, these bullshit statements alone just insinuate that Japanese people are working with me so I can't be doing anything wrong or racist. Otherwise, they'd tell me. Yeah, because even if you're an artist at the end of her career and desperately trying to save it, you're still a well-known name and a POC don't have many opportunities in the industry and will take any job that's offered to them. This includes everyone who worked on this video. Why? Because people of color are easily replaced. They're expendable. Oh, you don't want to work with her just because her entire music video is racist? Whatever, we'll just find another director, choreographer, or dancer. That's it. That's literally it. That's how it works. So we suck up to these people and we work with them because the industry doesn't value us enough and not working only harms us, not the artist. I mean, spewing random Japanese words that have nothing to do with your song is just short of saying ching chong, long, ting tong. But you know, she's admiring the culture. She does remind me of this skit. There's a link to something else, but I wasn't able to capture it. This is extremely racist and insulting. I'm an Asian American. I studied Japanese for two years. I've, <laughs> I've yet to begin to scratch the surface of Japanese culture and etiquette, and I'm not even the most confident or comfortable speaking or writing it, because I don't feel as if I know enough to say I can speak Japanese. Singing random words in a language you don't know is racist. When you use it for the sake of a song and just appropriate part of a culture so much. Then you have your Japanese backup dancers. They all look the same. They're silent and kawaii. Of course, to you, dear Avril, that doesn't perpetuate the stereotype of cute, obedient, and submissive Asian women. Girls, get it. They're just too damn cute and fit your set. God, you're turning 30. I don't care if you want to act childish and dress a certain way, but grow the fuck up and stop making arguments that defend your racist actions and try to justify them by name-dropping everything Japanese. You're not Japanese. You don't know Japanese. You don't know Japanese culture. Your song doesn't honor or flatter Japanese people or Japanese culture. It perpetuates a stereotype the West already holds. And you try to pass it off as them being cute and creative and appreciative and dedicated to your Japanese fans. No, fuck you. Hashtags cultural appropriation, Hello Kitty, Avril Lavigne, Hello Kitty, racism, and Avril Lavigne. Political Sex Kittens had two whole years of Japanese. Obviously, she's deeply immersed in the culture and is able to make a value judgment on whether or not you're appropriating it. As an Asian American, not a Japanese person, her perspective is the most important one. I also like how she happened to mention they all look alike. It's very classy. It's very good. 
all all look alike. Can't tell them apart. Where have I heard that before? But let's not get off topic here. I mean, obviously, Avril is a horrible racist. Just because she flew to Japan and worked with an all-Japanese crew doesn't mean anything. She is a horrible person who just wants to mock and deride anything that's Japanese. Now, sure, political sex could and could have taken, you know, five minutes and looked into the video production and seen if maybe perhaps the cinematographer or producer, who were both Japanese, by the way, were the ones who picked the art direction. Hell, maybe they were the ones who said, let's have four Japanese girls in there that all dress this specific way. But again, political sex kid, she doesn't have time to do that. That's research. It's easier just to say Avril's a horrible person because she's white. After all, any time a white person uses anything from another culture, it's terrible. It's important to remember we are all separate but equal, and every group should always stay to themselves and never exchange anything, because that's appropriation. Now, in Avril's case, she didn't apologize. She just simply said, I'm not racist, you people are fucking idiots. And you know what? Good for that. Good, good on you, Avril Levine, for not bending over and taking it up the ass from idiots like political sex kitten. But I'd like you to contrast that with something that happened with Will Wheaton. Now, he made the mistake of apologizing to a social justice warrior, and I want to show you exactly what happens when you do that. So we're at the Will Wheaton Tumblr, and Cosmic Breaker asked, Hi, Will. I'm not trying to be antagonizing. You seem to be a rather progressive and really vocal on a lot of social issues. I'm bringing this up because I feel like you take it seriously. Using spirit animal is kind of uncool. Different forms of it belong to specific cultures that are already having a hard time with erasure, partially through appropriation. I've heard suggestions of using Patrons or Damon from his Dark Materials trilogy as alternatives. Cheers. Now, Will Wheaton responds, I got a lot of messages like yours that were bordering on antagonizing, but I'll respond to you, this was entirely news to me, and I never meant to be offensive. I'll be honest, I think it's a little much to get upset about this, but I'm fully aware that I'm living on Scalzi's lowest difficulty setting with the celebrity cheat enabled, so I'll own up to the reality up front. My ancestors murdered untold numbers of Native Americans, and I hate that my country was built on their blood. And I hate that the worst poverty in America exists on tribal lands. What I hate the most is how many Americans don't know or care. Those issues, in my opinion, are more important than words. Having said that, I see the point you make. That so much already has been taken from Native people, and when a white guy takes something more, it's uncool. I never meant to take anything from anyone. I think spirit animals are really cool, and I love everything I've learned about Native or Aboriginal culture. I'm not trying to appropriate or lessen anything by expressing how much Kelly Sue inspires me, and how I'd like to be more like her. Now that was the opening to the conversation. And there you are. Will apologizes. He gives a sincere apology. He's not trying to appropriate another culture. He's well aware of the different hardships that Native Americans have faced, and he, he is sorry. He has apologized. So, how does Tumblr respond? Well, let's, let's take a look. This is from K. Tapest. It's amazing how problematic this apology is. I don't even think Will gets that he's white-splaining. For the education of those who might find themselves in this situation, here's a primer on what's wrong with this response. First, I got a lot of messages like yours that were bordering on antagonism, but I'll respond to you. I didn't like the tone those other people used. Yours was appropriate. I'll talk to you. Second, I think it's a little much to get upset about this, but... This doesn't affect me, and I've never given it two seconds worth of thought. And even though I'm about to launch into a whole explanation of how I get it, I need you to know that my first reaction is that everyone is oversensitive. Third, my ancestors murdered untold numbers of Native Americans, and I hate that my country was built on their blood. This outpouring of white guilt somehow brings it all back to me, and how I feel. Curious that. Fourth, I never meant to take anything from anyone. I think spirit animals are really cool. This would be the crux of the problem, sir, sir. Sir? Fifth, I'm not trying to appropriate or lessen anything by expressing how much Kelly Sue inspires me and how I like to be more like her. The point is not what you were trying to do, it's how you did it that affects others. Why don't you express your admiration for Kelly Sue in ways that are not inappropriate? Why must you express admiration in this exact way? Also, how fucking hard is it to say, oh, I did not realize that in spoking spirit animals like that is a problem, I won't do it again? That's really all you needed to say. You don't need to white splain or get all defensive at all. Let Will Wheaton serve as an example of what not to do. Trust me on this, y'all. Well, that was a very diplomatic reaction, Kate Tempest. Way to extend a hand of friendship to Will Wheaton. After his sincere apology, talking about how he wasn't trying to be uh, culturally appropriative of other things, but he really admired them. Obviously, this is the way that you reach people. Bravo. Now, Will would have been better served if he'd just listened to the captain. Shut up, Wesley.
but of course he couldn't. He had to apologize, because he is partially a social justice warrior. And so he tried to go out there and be sincere, and they, they kicked him right in the fucking nuts and spit in his face. That's what happens, Will. That is what happens when you apologize to these feral fucking animals. They don't give a shit. They just want something to bitch at and tear apart, and you were dumb enough to walk into the fucking den. And that is why you never apologize to these people, because it is never good enough. And they will constantly bitch about the littlest thing. And that's pretty much what cultural appropriation is. Bitching about the littlest thing that has no impact on anything else. These people want to live in a world of segregation, where all cultures are completely separate, and we have no interaction with one another. Don't wear costumes that reflect another culture. Don't learn another culture's language. Don't eat another culture's food. Don't listen to another culture's music. They are prophets of stagnation. They are preaching a message of death to the world. On the one hand, they preach the tenets of multiculturalism and globalism and tell us how this is an integrated community and that the world is one nation and that you know humanity is one people. But their actions don't reflect that. They do not care about a global community or about other cultures. They just want to bitch at you for having an interest in something else. Especially if you're white. That is the common theme throughout all of this. If you go and look up cultural appropriation, 10 to 1, I will bet you 10 to 1, more often than not, it is going to have to do with white people. Especially if it's a white male, and especially if it's a straight white male. They hate them, and will constantly, constantly bitch about it. That's why when you're looking through cultural appropriation, you rarely ever see anything talking about St. Patrick's Day. You don't see them saying these parades are terrible. There's no no uh, movement to get people to stop eating Lucky Charms. Did you know? I'm a, I'm partially a mech, and every time you eat those fucking four-leaf clover marshmallows, somebody somebody in my past weeps because they starved and ate potatoes or something. I don't know. I mean, when you eat Lucky Charms, okay, you culturally appropriating pieces of shit, when you eat Lucky Charms, you know what that's like for me? That'd be like if I ate Mamios. How do you like that? How do you like that if I were to eat Mamios? You horrible racist son of a bitch. Now, granted, Mamios would probably not be the most kid-friendly brand. Mammy! Mammy, I'm coming! Ah! But it is full of protein. Now, at the end of the day, really, when you look at it, cultural appropriation and the people who believe in it are just fucking boring. What kind of world do they want to live in? It's one devoid of fun, and entertainment, and happiness. Cultures, when they interact, bring things to the table that other cultures don't possess. It's through cooperation and innovation that we create new interesting things that make the world entertaining and fun to be a part of. Not everything is so fucking super serious. Just because I like your music, or I like your hairstyle, or I like your way of dressing, because I want to mimic it, because I want to emulate it, doesn't mean I'm trying to push you down. It's the highest compliment I can pay you. Now, these social justice warriors, they may want to live in a world that's cold and dead and sterile and devoid of anything that gives warmth and happiness to people. But as for myself, I'd rather live in a world where little Japanese girls front death metal bands, because that's just more fun. I've known I was a wolf since a really young age. Well, I had a big following because I usually go to the conventions and I meet a lot of people. And um, I, I had got accused of killing and beheading a dog. I did behead him. I didn't kill him. He was my friend. His name was Shadow. Well, you see, she didn't kill him. She just cut his head off, which is, I think, what most of us think of when we, when we picture a wolf in our mind, capable of using sharp instruments in anger and beheading other animals which are challenging their dominance. Well, that or the nonstop raping that wolves are well known for. It's very, very problematic. I don't know if Tumblr can handle having wolves on their website. These violent rapists are a danger to everyone, especially dogs, apparently, in this case. Welcome one and all to the sixth installment of Tumblrisms. We're going to be taking a look at Otherkin as we journey through the land of insanity, otherwise known as Tumblr. Uh, there's no real way to get around this, but buckle up, because this is going to be one hell of a fucking episode. The sheer amount of insanity in this one particular group is off the fucking charts. And I've looked at some crazy shit before, but Otherkin really takes the cake when it comes to batshit raving lunacy. So I think it's going to be fun. But, you know, we need to, we need to pin down what that, uh, what that definition is, because we're shitlords. You need to remember that. We are privileged shitlords. And we need to understand 
how these snowflakes think. We've got to get their terminology down. Because when you go into Tumblr and when you're looking at other kin, you're going to start to see all sorts of weird shit. And I, I think one of the first things, even be, you know what, even before we go and look up the definition of other kin, we probably need to make a distinction between what is a furry and what is an other kin. Well, it just so happens that I've, I've used my immense artistic skills, which I'm well known for, to put together this nice little infograph that I think will help to highlight the major difference between what a furry is and what an other kin is. A furry is a human pretending to be a wolf. An other kin is a wolf pretending to be a human. Let me see if I can clarify it a little bit more. A furry smells like death because they've been in that suit for five days at a convention, and the internal temperature in that motherfucker is equal to the same temperature your oven would be at if you wanted to cook a pizza. An other kin drags their ass on the ground rather than using toilet paper. A furry will drink far too much alcohol and then nearly die of dehydration when they yiff themselves into a coma in the hotel room later that night. An other kin will piss on their mother's azalea bushes so the other dogs in the neighborhood know who the fucking alpha male is. A furry will terrify children in a costume they've made that looks like something that's been birthed from a nightmare into the real world. An other kin will growl at ground beef in the market because they think that's what hunting is. So now that we know that critical difference between a furry and an other kin, let's, uh, let's pop on by valhallenbadger.tumblr.com to get a better idea of just what this other kin community is really all about. So just who is Valhallen Badger? Well, this is their About Me section. Hello, you can call me Elliot. I identify as androgyny, and my pronouns are Z, Zer, Zers, and Zerself. I'm pansexual and panromantic. I'm a 20-year-old college student majoring in geology. I love to draw and sculpt. I'm a spiritual polytherian, and my stereotypes are as follows. American Badger. Not one of those commie Russian motherfuckers. It's an American Badger. I tend to feel this one most strongly, thus my URL. I also identify as a hurrah bat, and as a black-tailed jackrabbit. In addition, I identify as being cat-hearted, deer-hearted, and fiction-hearted, with Thuruku Tazaki from the book Colorless Thuruku Hizaki and His Years of Pilgrimage. I'm neurodivergent. I have Major Depressive Disorder, MDD, General Anxiety Disorder, GAD, Agoraphobia, and Avoidant Personality Disorder, AVPD. In addition, I have issues with paranoia, some delusions induced by anxiety, and a severe problem with maladaptive daydreaming. So now, for some less serious information about me. Hmm. I enjoy metal, punk, and folk music most of all. I'm always open to music suggestions that fall outside of these genres, however, especially if it's cool experimental music. I like drawing and crafting. I may post some of my creations occasionally. I am interested in taxidermy and bone collecting. <laughs> oh, oh, wow. <laughs> I also... I... Oh, fuck. I also enjoy collecting rocks and mineral samples. I'm a pagan and an animist. Oh. I'm Mod Badger at Kin Experiences. <laughs> Holy shit. This is like reading John Wayne Gacy's fucking journal from when he's 10. <laughs> you just, you know what's going to happen. <laughs> you can't read this and not know what's going to happen. Hi, I'm completely insane and think I'm a badger. By the way, I'm really interested in collecting bones. <laughs> Why do you step into my van? Let's go for a drive. Holy fucking hell. So now that we know a little bit more about the person that wrote this, let's find out about other canonity. Things that people need to realize about other canonity. Canon I don't know how to pronounce that. Things that people need to realize about other canonity. Seriously, people both inside and outside the community need to get it through their heads that other can means to identify as non-human. Identifying with something non-human as being other-hearted. The two are not the same. A kin type is not a fursona. Someone can make their fursona after their kin type or realize they actually are kin to the creature chosen as their fursona, but the two are not equivalent by definition. Other kinity is not exclusively a spiritual belief. Many other can identify as such for psychological reasons. Other canonity is not a gender identity. We are not appropriating transgender struggles. Some other can are transgender. A fair amount are, in fact. Being one doesn't mean one cannot be the other. They are different types of identities. Stop erasing the gender identities of trans other can and stop using the existence of other can to invalidate trans people's identities. Your transphobia is disgusting and blatantly obvious. Some other can experience species dysphoria which means they have a strong disconnect with their human body. Trans other can have found similarities between species dysphoria and their gender dysphoria if they have it, and so the two get discussed. They are not the same, but they can be comparable. Other can don't think it's cultural appropriation to wear wolf ears. 
or that it's oppression to have houseplants, or something ridiculous like that. Stop falling for obvious trolls. Other kinetity is not a mental illness by definition. Some may identify as such due to reasons derived from trauma or illness, but it isn't in and of itself a mental illness. In fact, a large majority of us whom are mentally ill, in addition to being other kin, have confided our identity to mental health professionals who think it's a healthy identity to have. Stop yelling at us to get help. Your ableism is not appreciated by anyone. I'm sure there are other important things out there that should be added to the list, but this is all my brain is coming up with for the nonce. Well, you know, I'm going to have to agree. I don't think wearing wolf ears is cultural appropriation. I'm, I'm fairly certain wolves aren't going to mind. But now we have a better picture of insanity. So going forward, we're going to have a better idea of what we're dealing with, because there are all sorts of kin types. You might have heard them uh, discuss that, or Therians. Now there's a, a difference between those two, but I can't be fucking bothered to learn it. I can only handle so much crazy in one sitting, and if you're looking for me to go into all of this, that's not going to happen. I'm just dealing with kin types. So what's, what's a kin type? Well, you'll find that other kin use kin as a suffix for pretty much anything. You can be a plant kin, you can be a dragon kin, you can be a fiction kin, you can be a kin kin if you wanted to be, which would be even more insane, I don't know if that exists yet, but by the end of this video or by the time people watch it, I'm sure it's fucking going to exist. Welcome to Tumblr, where anything can be real because fuck you, that's why. Now you may be saying, Jim, come on, there's got to be a limit. But you'd be wrong, as seen in the post by Paranoid Raindrops. Please like or reblog this if you are weatherkin, divine kin of any kind, demonkin, void spacekin. Just want to be friends with this lonely rain cloud. I have to start over from nothing, and I would very much enjoy the opportunity to follow you and have new people in my life. And then it's hashtagged otherkin, we are the kin, divine kin, demonkin, voidkin, spacekin, and raindropkin. That's right. There are people out there that are weatherkin. Apparently Doppler radar is such hot shit that people identify as it. I know, and when I feel a rainstorm coming, I want to find a weatherman and have him hold me tenderly. So now that we have a better idea of just uh, what an otherkin is, let's go out and meet the community. And what better place to start than here? A small deer boy explores the forest of his mind. Hashtag, I'm actually a stag. Selfie, agender, demi boy. They, them, he, him, dear kin, other kin, antlers, reblog my selfie if you love me, pan romantic, demisexual. So, just what are we going to find at castlebeyondthegoblincity.tumblr.com? Well, the Goblin King. The years have not been kind to David Bowie. My name is Imber. I'm a 16 year old nature worshipping eight gender demi boy. I prefer neutral pronouns, but I'm also fine with male. Part time gentle forest creature. Part-time ferocious beast, polykin wolf deer dragon, amateur cosplayer and aspiring furry, hardcore feminist, Illinois, I draw, write, sing, act, and play the ukulele, single, I take my not safe for work, I always pick hugs over drugs, and then there's the Instagram and Etsy accounts they use. So just to sum up, it's a 16-year-old nature-worshipping feminist demi-boy who's single right now. So any ladies out there? Got you covered. So let's see what uh, the Goblin King has to say. This is from April 4th, 2015. Some yuppie dude bro. Pop music has destroyed my hope for humanity. Me. Really. Not racism. Not sexism. Not the rampant discrimination of the human race by the cishet male white hierarchy. Not war. Not genocide. Not the fact that we're killing our planet. Some yuppie dude bro. No, I don't give a shit about that. What really grinds my gears is seeing young girls listening to music and having fun. Well, I think we found a winner here. Let's, uh, let's delve a little deeper. Now, this next post is pretty long, but I think it gives you an idea of just who the Goblin King is. So, let's find out a little bit more about our dear kin. Day one. I cried so hard that it scared my father. He spent the night outside my bedroom door just to make sure I didn't stop breathing like a newborn in her crib the first week. Day two. I went to work, and I cried in the bathroom. Day three. I believe I was cured. Now I think my mind was playing a cruel joke on me. Day four. I told you I miss you, and you replied with, thank you. Day five. I saw a picture of you on Instagram, and it lit my throat on fire, so I burned your love letters over the flame. Day six. I smoked weed with a boy on his back porch, and he asked questions you were afraid to, but still, I couldn't kiss him on his couch. Day seven. I couldn't sleep because I kept dreaming of you kissing other girls on your couch. Day 8. 
I gave you all of your stuff back, and you thought I looked like a warrior, but really, I went home and cried an entire ocean into existence. Day 9. I laughed without you. Day 10. I kept finding excuses to text you, and you kept ignoring me. Day 11. I cried until my stomach heaved itself up, and I slept next to the toilet in case those nasty dreams came again. Day 12. Since when is heartbroken so goddamn romantic? There's nothing pretty about losing feelings in my knuckles, after squeezing my hands so tight to keep from texting you. Day 13. I could never squeeze them tight enough. I could never imagine that you would be so good at letting me fade. Day 14. The doubt makes my spine feel less like vertebrae and more like giant icicles. You never loved me. Day 15. I found out you had replaced me, and it flicked at my bruises, but my ribs didn't break. Day 16. I told everyone about you, and they said you were stupid for leaving. But I think you were stupid for staying the first time you sliced my heart on the side of the road. Day 17. I didn't think about you for an entire night because I was drunk in bed with someone else. Day 18. What color are your eyes? How big are your hands? Where was that freckle on your face I used to look at while you slept? Day 19. Sometimes all I feel in my chest is my heart trying to break out of its cage. I think it's tired of everything I have put it through. Day 20. I'm sorry I couldn't ignore your birthday. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Day 21. This was a shitty poem about a shitty person. But I don't think of you so much anymore. I don't think of you so much anymore. Life is hard for a deer. Well, I cry every time. Well, I don't know about you, but I cry every time. Who knew that deers had such emotionally traumatic lives? Like, apparently, Tumblr is the number one website for fucking creatures in the forest. <laughs> you know, Twitter's got to step up its game. All it's got are those birds. But if you've got four legs, if you're a quadruped, Tumblr is where it's at. And that's where all the forest creatures go to tell you about their heartbreak and the sorrows of their lives. Like that one time... The tree bark just didn't cut off right. Or how good that grass was yesterday. Or taking a shit next to that bush. Well, with all these struggles and hardships in life, like being a deer who happens to be a feminist, or a badger that wants to collect human bones, if there was only a place where other kin could go to release that emotional weight and to just lay it all out there. Oh, well, hey, what do you know there is? It's confessions.tumblr.com, a Tumblr blog set up to allow other kin to anonymously vent about their day-to-day -day frustration. So why don't we take a look at a few and get a, a better understanding of just the kind of traumas that the other kin deal with on a daily basis. Anonymous posts on the 4th of April. Even though everything I feel tells me I'm a bear kin, I don't want to be a bear. I don't particularly like bears. I just feel like I am one. Well, at least I know where to find the answer when somebody asks, does crazy shit in the woods? Anonymous posts on the 2nd of April. I'm slightly irritated at Fictionkin in general. I don't hate anyone. I don't have the desire to tell people how to identify. It just seems like Fictionkin are a bit less legit than someone who is a cat, dog, or dragonkin. <laughs> Sorry, I need to reread that because my mind melted a little bit. It just seems like Fictionkin are a bit less legit than someone who is a cat, dog, or dragonkin. I just don't get it. How do you live your life as a character that isn't real, or could die in the series? I think it's just an infatuation with a series rather than an actual identity. <laughs> Come on. Come on. If irony had a physical weight to it, you could package this post up into a bag and bludgeon people to death with it. It's almost like watching somebody who's on the cusp of self-awareness, but they just they haven't made that final step over the line just yet. Anonymous posts on the 1st of April. I'm Dragonkin. And I get to travel a lot for work, but I hate flying an airplane so much. Being forced to sit straight up while enclosed in a tiny plane and not being able to stretch my wings out and fly myself makes me feel so sick and dizzy each flight. I wonder how many dragonkin are base jumpers. Probably not a lot. Or probably not a lot that ever make it to the second jump. The ripcord's there for a reason, champ. Those wings aren't going to glide your ass to the ground just as safely as you might think they are. Just saying, pack a parachute, asshole. Anonymous posts on the 30th of March. I think identifying as a factkin is extremely disrespectful. Being factkin of a dead person does not make it better. You are disrespecting real people and disrespecting the memory of those past. 
it's ableist to claim you are someone else, as they would definitely trigger disassociative episodes and racist to ID as fact again of someone of another race than you. Sincerely, it is disrespectful all around. You see, there's a line you don't cross. If you want to be a deer, go right ahead, but don't you dare say you're Benjamin Franklin. That's a step too far. Anonymous posts on the 27th of March. I'm Demonkin, but a peaceful and helpful demon, so I don't get along with some of the other Demonkin on Tumblr, which sucks. I'm really lonely. Plus, it's kind of scary because they tell me I should try and hang around Angelkin instead, most of which I'm anxious of, old habits die hard. I just wish there were more demons like me. So even in the land of special snowflakes, this particular Demon King is a special snowflake. You'd think the fires of hell would melt him, but no, apparently not. He's just a nice guy all around. I wasn't spitting pea soup at the priest because I wanted to spook him. I just was trying to give him a pleasant meal. I was thinking of his health. He needs to eat healthier. Anonymous post on the 26th of March. I'm a dear Therian, and I really wish I could find a herd. <laughs> it's called hunting. Good luck. Anonymous post on the 25th of March. As a deerkin, it's very pleasing to hang out deep in the woods where everything is quiet. Especially eating berries and reading a book, maybe. I get very depressed in the winter because it's too cold for me to do this. You poor bastard. Unable to eat berries and read books like every other deer out there. I feel your pain. Anonymous post on the 17th of March. I'm a dollkin, feeling astral horns, and I don't know why. Perhaps it's because you're fucking crazy. Look into that. I don't know. It's a little tip from me. Maybe you're just completely insane. Anonymous posts on the 14th of March. I'm birdkin. When I was little, I always ran with closed eyes and spread my arms out. Tried to jump as far and as high as I could and imagined I would fly. I still do it when no one is watching. It feels so natural not to feel the ground beneath me. That is until the moment my face connects with the fucking pavement and I get sent to the hospital with a concussion. <laughs> yeah, I bet you do it when no one's watching. Because you look insane. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> You're right. <laughs> Jesus. There are people like this. Oh. Anonymous posts on the 8th of March. I'm Monsterkin, and sometimes I make small growling noises, and I feel special when my friends call it cute. God, it's almost like... Yeah, hear me out on this. I know it's crazy. It's almost like you're doing this for attention. That That's weird, huh? Like, maybe you're not really a monsterkin, and you just want people to pay attention to you? I, I know, I'm probably probably way off. You uh, you keep you keep doing what you're doing. Hiding under beds and grabbing little kids' feet when they pop out to go take a pee in the middle of the night. Or whatever the fuck it is, you do. Anonymous posts on the 27th of February. When I walk past the raw meat aisle in stores, I get hungry. The meat just looks so tasty and chewy, and I drool imagining the taste and texture in my mouth. I can't tell if I'm demonkin or wolfkin, or something like that. All I know is is that I want to eat raw meat. Can you, uh, can you picture this? A, let's say, 20-year-old, morbidly obese man in a wolf costume, drooling at the mouth as he stares at ground beef in the meat aisle of his store, as children run screaming because he's furiously masturbating, because that's what wolves do. Don't argue with me on this. I know about this. I've read enough Tumblr to know this. They behead dogs, and they masturbate in the meat aisle at stores. It's just part of what wolves naturally do. Stop being ableist, you fucking shitlords. Don't judge them. They're special. You need to respect that. You know, there was a time, and it wasn't that long ago, and for some circles it still exists, where furries were the worst thing on the internet. It seemed like every week you had another story of another Tumbles the Stair Dragon. And for anybody who doesn't know who Tumbles is, feel free to go check out the Dramatica article. It's, it's fucking eye-opening. But every week, it seemed like there was something like that. They were obnoxious. They were everywhere. They were constantly pushing their dumb shit everywhere. Their art was everywhere. And the people that were in the community were seen to be freaks. But something happened over the last seven years. Seven or eight years. Now, don't get me wrong. They're still freaks. But they're freaks with a better image. Now, part of that is because of people like, I don't know, Uncle Kage. I have often said that we are our own worst enemy. Because of, because of the early days of furry fandom, the image that was put forth to the world at large was not perhaps the most positive image that could have existed. <clears throat> I've been trying to fight that ever since. And what he says is right. They are their own worst enemy. You've got to take back control and rein it in a little bit. 
Now, is that possible with other kin? Can other kin rein it back in? Because when you go through Tumblr, when you're looking at this, it is insanity. Pure insanity. You have people that believe that they are everything that could possibly exist. They are dead people. They are living people. They are fictional characters. They are dragons and lizards. They are wolves. They are plants. They are fairies and fae. They are demons and gods. They are convinced of it. You throw in a little sprinkling of mental illness and it, it really takes off. It's like the headmates thing where you're just, you're facilitating, you're, you're helping along crazy people to be even crazier by letting them buy into this bullshit, by not having a, a division, a line that says, hey, it's play pretend, we're not being real here. It's hard to look through this and to go through the tags, and there, there are so many tumblers about other kids out there. And by the way, I saw this one. Please, God, please make this a thing, because this is so dumb on its own that it just deserves to exist. I was really disappointed that there weren't more of these, because that would have been the whole fucking video. If I could have, if I could have got this, this should be a fucking thing. But when you break it down to its brass tacks, what are you looking at? Well, you saw in those confessions, right? These anonymous posters. Almost all of them repeat the same thing. And if you go and look at that Tumblr, you're going to see what I'm talking about. It's people that want attention. They want to feel special. This has become a badge of honor in our current society. The more diverse, the more unique you are, the more worth you have. You can't just be average, or ordinary, or mundane. You can't just be a human being. You have to be a demigod, a deer kin. You have to be the system mate of a fucking head star, and all this other crazy bullshit, because then you can tack it up on your little Tumblr blog, and more people will pay attention. And it's not even enough anymore that there are all these bizarre things, that these other kins are all these different forms of nutty. They have to fight amongst themselves. Who's more unique? Go look at that confession page. It's, it's, it's mind-boggling how many of them will say, I'm just the same as this other person, but I'm a little bit different, and oh, woe is me, how lonely I am. Will you come and look at my blog and cry me a fucking river? What the hell happened to the Internet? I mean, there, in my mind, after going through this, there is a, there's a sharp line between furry and other kin. Furries are fun to laugh at, but I don't think they're crazy. Otherkin is a completely different thing. It's, it's attention whoring at a level that just is, it's mind blowing. It's, it's boggling, really, when you look at it. So really, at the end of the day, it looks like the Otherkin community is broken down into a couple of different groups. You've got one group that are people that are desperate for attention, and they will make themselves unique in any way they can to get that attention. It's just a way of drawing people to them. The other group are legitimately crazy people that have been drug along for the ride by these attention whoring assholes. Welcome back to Tumblrisms. Today, we're going to be looking at fandoms. There's a, a concept I think most people can wrap their head around. Everybody's a fan of something. Maybe it's sports, or it's an anime, or a video game. Maybe you're a huge fan of a movie franchise, or a, a television franchise. But generally, when you fanboy out about it, or fangirl out about it, you're considered part of the fandom. How dedicated are you? Well, I don't know if we've been doing it right, Internet. I know I certainly haven't, because I'm not shipping anybody. What? What's shipping, Jim? I've never heard of that term before. Uh, don't feel bad. Google has us covered, because why wouldn't they? Why wouldn't their dictionary have a definition for this? What a... What, welcome to the current year. Now, a ship is not a vessel that carries cargo. It's not delivering consumer goods, at least not in this context. The thing that it's delivering are the hopes and dreams of fat 13-year-old girls all over the Internet. Because it involves taking characters from a franchise and putting them into a relationship. Hell, it's not just Google that has a definition for this. Even fucking Wikipedia has an article on this. Taking characters and putting them into relationship. What the fuck? Daria? Oh, there's, 
There's a character I like to ship. You know, usually I like to put Daria Morgendorfer in a relationship with, I don't know, oncoming traffic. Now, believe it or not, on a website that's dominated by teenage girls, shipping is kind of a big fucking thing. Who would have thought? My little joke from earlier might have had a little bit of truth in it. I know, it's weird, isn't it? But apparently, shipping is a really big thing on Tumblr. And it's the easiest way to kind of pinpoint the hardcore fans in a fandom. Case in point, Destiel. That's Dean Winchester and Castiel the Angel of the Supernatural franchise. They're combined together. You take a little of each name. It's like a it's like a fanfic version of a Megazord. And the giant hunk of shitty plastic you're left with, in this case, is Destiel. So what kind of relationship is it? Well, if you browse through the search results, you get a real clear idea on exactly where they want to take this. Are they brothers in arms? Are they comrades? Are they friends? Or are they involved in a really hardcore BDSM gay relationship? I'm not saying that there was some anal rape that took place here, but that is a fuck ton of blood to be having on your crotch if you're just chilling with your bro. I'm just, I'm maybe I'm reading into it too much. Maybe I'm reading, no, you know what? No, I'm not. Apparently, no, I'm not. What kinky hardcore shit are these people in this fucking tag imagining is happening between these two? I've heard of rough sex before, but not having to have fucking surgery afterwards to repair the damage that's been done. But apparently the people in the Destiel tag, that's what they think of on a regular basis. I mean, just look at that fucking face. Look at the shame on that fucking face. He knows. He knows it's wrong. He fucking knows where he is, what's going on. Look at that shame. But I can't, you know, I noticed something earlier when we were browsing through those results. It caught my eye right at the top. I don't know if you picked up on it. Crowley. What? So if I'm to understand this right, the ultimate pairing in the supernatural shipdom would be Dean Winchester, Castiel, and Crowley. I, what do you, what do you even call that? Oh, apparently you call it Drowliel in this one search result. This one name that this one person came up with. Congratulations, Tink DW. It's yours, buddy. Maybe they have another name for it, but you know what? I'm going with Drowliel. I like the one that sounds like a pagan chant that's going to summon an earth spirit. Like if I say it with enough conviction, a gnome is going to pop out of my fucking sprinkler system. Oh, sacred Drowliel. I like it. I'm going to go with it. Now, I know you're wondering, because I sure as shit was, what sort of fiction goes with this? I mean, we saw the pictures. I, I think we've got a good idea of where this is going, but what, what backstory are they giving these couplings? Oh, would you look at... Isn't that adorable? Dean falls off a tree while rescuing a kitten. Cass knows that to heal someone, you just got to kiss it all better. You know, I'd like to take a moment right now just to speak directly to the supernatural fandom on Tumblr, because we've, we've got to talk about something. Specifically, we have to talk about Castiel. Now, I've read some of your fan fictions, and I've looked at a shit ton of your pictures, and I think you're overlooking one major thing when it comes to this particular character. Let's see if we can pinpoint it. Let me see if I can guide you to the proper conclusion. So here we are, and we have Castiel, an angel of God. And how does Castiel appear throughout almost the entirety of the show, with few exceptions? Well, how would you describe him if you were explaining Castiel to somebody? Well, he's always got this fucking look on his face, doesn't he? That neutral, unemotional, almost robotic-like look. Kind of a, a blank slate. You can't really tell what's going on, can you? He also has a habit of speaking monotone. There's not a lot of inflection or personality or emotion in what he says. It's just sort of dead and flat. And I seem to recall he also has a lot of trouble dealing with sarcasm and jokes. So if we were to put that all together, dead, emotionless face, monotone voice, can't pick up on sarcasm or humor. What does that describe? Does that describe somebody who's going to kiss Dean's boo-boo after he falls out of the tree? Oh, I know what it reminds me of. Oh, there's Castiel again, fucking the dresser. He's autistic. Castiel is the definition of autistic. What are you doing? I asked my priest parents if they shipped Destiel. This is not a drill, people. Okay, so yesterday I asked my parents if they shipped Destiel or if it became canon. How would they react? My mom was like, meh, I don't care either way. But then I asked my dad and he said, Dad, I certainly wouldn't stop watching it if it became canon. And I think it's a nice idea, but I wouldn't want it to be the main focus of the show. Me. So, do you mean like a subplot? Dad, yeah, I just don't want it to take over the show. Me, whispers to my sister. Holy fuck, he ships it.
I wonder what your priest parents' reaction to, I'm not gay. I, I can't be gay, but that angel is pretty fuckable. Yeah, just, just ask it old mom or dad. Just say, hey, mom and dad, you know, I'd love to go to church today. That Jesus Christ guy that they have up on that crucifix in there gets my dick hard. And see what the reaction to that is. My priest parents are okay with the idea of a dude fucking an angel. <laughs> I don't even know where to begin with that, really. Firm chest, soft shirt. I am author, JJ author, fan, nerd of all sex, positive, asexual, queer, female, single mom, ENFJ, Gryffindor, warrior, CD, sentinel, neutral, good, MILF, no righteous path, chapter 10, and supplemental. Castiel takes care of Dean. This chapter is not safe for work. Graphic, sexual content. I don't know about you, but I'm really tempted to click on that. I mean, after all, this is an author, nerd, nerd of all sex, positive, asexual, queer, female, single mom, ENFJ, Gryffindor, warrior, CD, sentinel, neutral, good, MILF. You just know they write good fan fiction. You know what? Let's, let's take the lead. Let's go take a look. Now, this little journey is going to lead us to Archive of Our Own, which is a website that hosts quite a bit of fan fiction. Lots of fandom stuff to be found on there. Could do a whole video series on that in and of itself. But let's take a look at our little story. God, that is a shit ton of tags. On his 40th birthday, Dean Winchester suddenly begins to worry he may have lost his chance for a real mate. He's been so focused on his business as a 24-hour roofing and repair man that he's never taken the time to date properly, even make a lasting relationship outside of his family. Beginning in their late 30s, Alphas and Omegas start to lose their mating and bonding hormones, making it more difficult and often impossible, to mate or bond with anyone past a certain age. But as a modern alpha, Dean would be content with a companion at least. Blood bonds aren't the be-all end-all. However, after a late-night emergency roofing repair call from Castile Novak, Omega Dean starts to hope, yearn. The only hang-up is that Castile admits to being as old-fashioned as the book he teaches, nervous to go against his religious upbringing by being with someone who he can't bond properly, as Alpha and Omegas are intended to do, but he can't deny his attraction to Dean. And despite his sensibilities, he thinks that just maybe, he can change for the man he's falling in love with. 52,151 words. Oh boy. That is a whole shit ton of autism. Dean's running his roof and repair business, and he just wants to mate with Castile. <laughs> Holy shit. Let me just be real with everybody for a moment. You would find more heterosexual content if you went to X Hamster and searched gayest shit ever in the gay only tag than you would in the search result for Destiel on Tumblr. Of course, fandoms don't just stop at shipping. It's not just characters within the same franchise. No, they reach outside of the IP. We need multiple fictional universes to cross over with each other. Let me try to put this in context, maybe an example you might understand. Take Dragon Ball Super, for instance. Now, Tumblr would look at that show, and after writing 182 fanfics about Piccolo and Gohan having a gay relationship, they'd get around to the idea that, you know what would make this better? Some Naruto. And you know what, fuck it, let's put a little guts in there, too. That's the ultimate universe for me. Uh, what, what are we going to call that, Tumblr? What should we call the combination of Dragon Ball, Naruto, and Berserk? You've got Guts, you've got Goku, and you've got Naruto. I know. Nagugu. That is fantastic. That is my fictional universe. I'm living there. And I'm going to write so many gay fan fictions. If you know Guts' backstory, it's not that much of a stretch. Because believe me, he's already been stretched out. If you've read the manga, you know what I mean. Oh, but come on, Jim. Tumblr can't be that stupid. I mean, that's a ridiculous example. What, what, could they, what could they do that would be stupid on that level? Say hello to Super Hulak. That's Supernatural. Doctor Who. And Sherlock Holmes. I can't get enough smarmy British fucks in one show. Let's combine two of them together. And I need some eye candy, so get Dean on in there. Come on, Supernatural, you come on over. Super Hulak versus Homestuck. Both fandoms are looked down upon by the Tumblr community. Seen as annoying, and sometimes they just want them both to shut up. Super Hulak. What? No, fuck you, I won't shut up. My fandom is awesome. You don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Homestuck. Huh, yeah, Homestuck fandom sucks. Super Hulak. No, fuck you, fuck you, we can kill you all. And hide your bodies so no one will ever know where to find them. Homestuck. Clicks through some fan art. Super Hulak, you all suck, fuck you. Homestuck, RPS on MSPRP. Super Hulak, you all should just go die, fuck you. The Black J says, 
I'm sorry, but every time I see someone say something about Super Ulock that isn't positive, the whole fandom just jumps in, throwing insults and creative ways to kill you and make it look like you killed yourself. <laughs> Holy shit. I'm going to read that again. Jumps in, throwing insults and creative ways to kill you and make it look like you killed yourself. Look, I'm not a part of the fandom or anything, and I'm not making fun of it. But when other people see how badly you handle those situations, you're just bringing your fandom down. Do yourself a favor and calm your tits. Mer person. Super hulaks. Shut the fuck up. We know how to exercise demons faster than anyone. We're a bunch of high-functioning sociopaths that know 272,828 ways to kill you and make it look like an accident without them finding the body. We also know how to eat you and torture you, so don't fucking mess with this fandom. Me. Okay, I'm calling the fucking cops. You know, I need to take a... Let's take a step back here. Maybe I'm just looking at a bad bunch of reactions to the Super Hulak community. I mean, they can't be... They can't be that fucking awful, can they? But I'm, I'm noticing a theme that the Super Hulak fandom is fucking psychotic. But where are they getting that from? Oh, you know what? I bet it was this. This single solitary gif from fucking Madden Generator that drove their community insane. Has to be. I mean, if you visit this amazing fucking Tumblr, Doctor Who and its fans suck, fuck Doctor Who and Sherlock, you find an interesting little piece of Super Who-lock history. Now, scrolling down it, it doesn't look like anything special. That is until you get to the very end, and you read the reactions that this got. Yeah, that's right. That's not a misprint. That's 536,384 notes. Half a million people reacted to a John Madden gif that was talking shit about Super Hulak. Let's, uh, let's back it up a little. Let's take a look at some of the level-headed reactions that this gif got. Bitch, I will fucking cut you. Just try it, nerd. You've angered the wrong fandom. Shut up, nerd. You're going down, punk. Just you fucking wait. You will learn that this fandom is far worse than you will ever want to know. We may seem soft and shy, but we're just being nice. We can be cold, cruel and mean, and make you suffer and wish you never said what you said. We can send you into the farthest, most empty reaches of the galaxy, summon demons to our disposal, to make you suffer and make you feel the feelings that we experience. And don't fucking think for a single goddamn second that's easy. The amount of emotions that would boil inside of you would literally kill you. So keep your motherfucking distance, and we won't hurt you. So stay the hell back, asshole. If you so much as insult us one more time, we will bring fiery hell upon you and bitch slap you into oblivion. Your move, dildo. You're like 12. Calm down. We know how to kill a human and hide the evidence. Your body will never be found, and that is a promise. You're going to be out after curfew. You do realize a majority of the fandom are 20-somethings, right? Or at least in college. We can find you, kill you, and make it look like you killed yourself. Don't try us, smiley face. Now you might say, that's a bit of an overreaction to a fucking gif, making fun of your dumb little fandom. But you would be wrong. You don't fucking talk shit about Super Hulak, or I will fucking murder you. But you know, now I'm starting to wonder, how off-kilter are these people? I mean, that was a pretty big shit fit. That was a big spurgot over a fucking gif. Uh, you know, how angry do they get when you do something that really goes against the grain? When you say alter a character or write something they don't like. If only there was a clear example of how horrible Tumblr fandoms can be. When you do something they don't like. What what would that example be? Oh, here we go. Steven Universe fandom is melting down after bullied fan artist attempts suicide. Controversy surrounding a Steven Universe fan artist has spread to the creative team that supported her. Well, you just know that this is going to be a heartwarming moment. Where we see what a Tumblr fandom really can do. Steven Universe is a beloved animated children's show, known for its smart and progressive depictions of its diverse and lovable cast of characters. But these positive qualities in the show itself have led to a very ugly turn of events in the Steven Universe fandom. After a beleaguered fan artist said she attempted suicide after being bullied by members of the fandom who felt her art was problematic, in a bizarre turn of events prompted by the ensuing debate over what kinds of fan art are acceptable, some fans have now turned even against the show's creative team, including show creator Rebecca Sugar. Oh, this is fantastic. So not only will the fandom on Tumblr go after its own members, it will attack the creators of the thing it is a fan of. That is some next level shit right there. We were talking about meta-autism. This is, this is... I'm, my mind is just fucking kapow. 
It all started last week when a fan artist going by the name Zammy caused a scare on Tumblr when she posted an apparent final note to her Tumblr, then disappeared for three days. When she reemerged, it was to post a tearful video she claimed was being filmed at a hospital, where she said she was getting the help she needed. Prior to Zammy's alarming initial farewell, members of the Steven Universe and Homestuck fandoms had reportedly created more than 40 critical blogs and other social media accounts directed at her because they believed she was purveying problematic depictions of many of the characters she drew. During her time in the fandom, Zami has been accused of a litany of flawed portrayals of characters including perpetuating, racism, stereotyping, transmisogyny, transphobia, apologism, incest, pedophilia, fatphobia, and ableism in her art. For example, when Zami drew a Japanese character from the popular anime Yawamushi Petal, she came under fire for giving the character yellow skin and slanted eyes. Now, I encounter that problem myself quite a bit. You may not know this, but I have a fairly active DeviantArt account, where I have a very popular webcomment called Mr. Stick Figure. Now, Dave, he's a white guy. But what happens when Dave has a friend named, I don't know, Tyrone? How do I depict Tyrone? I don't want to be racist. Do I give him things that make him more black? Wouldn't that be stereotyping? And I can't really leave his face white, right? I mean, that's, that's like a macro and a microaggression got together and fucked each other. That's a macro mic. So I, I've got to do something. Oh, I know. I'll give him a black face. So they, they got angry that she drew a Japanese character and made the Japanese character look Japanese. Ter that's terrible. Horrible. What are you doing? When she drew a black character, she came under fire for removing her afro and giving her blonde hair. When she drew a Native American Fluttershy, why, from My Little Pony, the response was mixed and often critical, pointing out that she had further stereotyped the character. I'm sorry, but you need to respect Fluttershy, the magical fucking ponies. Native American history. I, I... <laughs> Are these people for real? On the other side of the issue, plenty of people have insisted that it's more important to continue calling out what they see as problematic behavior even if that extends to the kind of social ostracism that led to all of this to begin with. Me not being a pushover for oppression makes me toxic, wrote one user. Fuck that. If you support people drawing canonly fat characters as skinny, or worse, whitewashing POC representation, you can unfollow me right now, because I don't need your shit. On Sunday night, the turmoil reached the Steven Universe production crew, prompting series co-producer Ian Jones Cordy to weigh in with a now-deleted tweet, saying artists should be allowed to draw what they want. The response was immediate. Racist fan art doesn't stop being racist just because it's fan art. Well, this is like a saga in and of itself. I mean, now all these twists and turns, where is it going to end? Meanwhile, the hateful rhetoric around Zombie's participation in the fandom continues, with numerous detractors arguing that she was faking her alleged hospital video. What a twist! Well, isn't that just fucking special? Here you actually have a community that's attacked one of its own for daring to draw their own version of fan art that got the blessing from the creator themselves, and that's still not good enough. We gotta go after them. And even if, even if, all the talk about suicide and hospital videos and arrests, if that was completely fictitious, which there seems to be a substantial amount of evidence that it could be, that doesn't dismiss the amount of shit this person got for drawing a, a Japanese character yellow, or giving a, a black woman a, a, what, what, a fucking wig? We're gonna act like black chicks don't use weaves? Like, come, who the fuck are we, who are you kidding? You know, after having looked through a, a good deal of these communities and really kind of dug into what they're about, I think the easiest way to visualize what a Tumblr fandom would be like is to picture an autistic man stomping his way through a GameStop and macing people in the face because Sonic's arms aren't supposed to be blue. The amount of pure anger when you poke them just a little bit, when you go against the grain just a little bit, when you're having a little bit of fun with some banter, is just astronomical. It really is mind-blowing. They'll get upset with you because you shipped a character they didn't like, or you didn't respect the ship they came up with. You didn't respect their crossover, or the crossover that you did violated some kind of headcanon that they had. They'll even get mad at you if the series creator says, hey, it's okay, go ahead and make that, because fuck the series creator. They know better. Tumblr fandoms are a little bit nutty. So be warned, if you're going to Tumblr and you're going to interact with the fandoms there, don't ask questions. Otherwise, it'll end up like this. Why, why do... I'm I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house.